You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero, when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. But up 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 ba Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. At People's Bank, our vision is to be the best community bank in America. We focus on building relationships with our clients and offering cutting-edge financial products. People's Bank is proud to support the local communities in which we work and live. This is Ashley Brown, People's Bank Vice President and Regional Manager, and we would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank, working together, building success. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two mangoes. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy your response. Blaine Heiser Bush, Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. The road to a championship is built on years of practice and hard work. That's true in basketball and the construction industry. The apprenticeship and upgrade training programs provided by the Athens Area Union Building Trades produces the workforce with the most modern skills and cutting edge knowledge in the industry. The key to success to the Bobcats on the floor is the same as your choice on the work site. The winning move is working with members of the Athens Area Union Building Trades, proud sponsor of Ohio University Basketball. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Who want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are one. Learn more at CareSource.com. You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero, when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. But up 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 Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Jumpstart your day at the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Athens. Enjoy complimentary hot breakfast, then unwind on our beautiful outdoor patio, which includes a gas fire pit and barbecue grill. Conveniently located on East State Street, just a short drive from the Ohio University campus and uptown Athens, the Fairfield Inn and Suites is situated near many shopping and dining venues. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites, you're our number one priority. Call 740-589-5839 to book your next visit to Athens or find us online at fairfieldinn.com. When you order your groceries online with ClickList from Kroger, you can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And you'll save time, too. Try ClickList from Kroger with same-day pickup. Check it out at Kroger.com. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. On a beautiful day in Athens, Ohio, the Central Michigan Chippewas come to town to face the Ohio Bobcats in a three-game series for sole possession of second place in the MAC. 
Good afternoon and welcome to OSF. I'm Cedric Granger, joined by my colleague Ethan Sargent. And Ethan, it looks like we have a fun day on our hands. Oh, yeah. And first, got to talk about this weather. It's an absolutely gorgeous day out today. Barely a cloud in the sky, right around 65 degrees here in Athens. So you can't ask for better softball weather, but you can't ask for a better matchup either. I mean, two really, really talented and good softball teams fighting right near the top of the MAC. This is going to be a fun one. Yeah, and it's going to be a great battle. As I said in the intro, it's going to be a battle for second place in the MAC as things are starting to heat up about halfway through the MAC schedule. When we look at the standings, Miami is up at top at 12 and 2 in the conference. Those only two losses, though, coming to the Ohio Bobcats uh, in their series. Second place is Ohio Bobcats at 9 and 5, 15, 18 on the season, but they've been on a roll, having won seven out of their last eight. Uh, they ended up losing, unfortunately, their last game to Ball State, but they're going to look to try to bounce back today against Central Michigan. Uh, Central Michigan, they're the team that's third in the standings right now with a 7-4 and four conference record. Not a bad mark at all, and they are going to be able to have a chance here in this three-game series to potentially take control of that second-place spot, Ethan. Yeah, that, that game, that series against Miami was, was amazing. I was watching it on YouTube. It was just phenomenal. There was some of the best softball games I've watched, really, where you could tell just the, you know, those two teams are two the best teams in the MAC, and that series in Athens when Miami does come here eventually is going to be one heck of a series. But Ferris coming up into this game, um, we got you know a really really good matchup of two really really talented teams. I'm excited to see where this one goes. Yep, the pitcher for the Ohio Bobcats today will be Mackenzie Cole, who I guess he delivers that first pitch right there, and that's going to be a ball as it misses the stone. But uh, first up for hitting for Central Michigan. It's going to be Abby Tomey. She averages 3, 2, 4, and 10 RBIs on the season. And she was second team All-Mac last season as a freshman. And she also burned the Bobcats in their season finale game last year. She had three hits against OU and will look to try to replicate that performance right there as Mackenzie Cole fired a pitch that was off the mark. 2-0 is the count. And as Ethan said, it is a very beautiful day here in Athens, 70 degrees, got a light breeze going back and forth. Uh, maybe not feel like a light breeze here in the press box here as that one is fouled out to the left field, making the count 2-1. Uh, but as I said, we got a little bit of wind picking up, maybe throwing our papers all around here. But uh, can't complain when you have weather like this after all the rainy days we've had. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the week, just in terms of the weather, the week has been a little rough. But the wind is kind of blowing across um, on your screen, kind of blowing to the left. Um, it is slightly blowing out, so that could be to the hitter's advantage potentially. Yeah, we'll see if that plays an impact as well to our outfielders if the ball mm -hmm. is going to be uh, in the air and it might be a little bit difficult to track. 3-1 is the count now as Mackenzie Cole looks to avoid giving up a walk. She has 54 of those on the year. Uh, her ERA is 4.48, 96 strikeouts, and 134 innings pitch, 10-10 10 10 on the season. And she delivers that one right in the zone for a strike. 3-2 is the count. It is full. Yeah, good, really good comeback pitch there um, just to be able to f fight in the zone. And now, you know, you set up a full count right away. Um, you know, good stuff from Tolmy to work the pitcher as well. Yeah, Tomi's a tough out. Like I said before, she has one of the best stat lines right now in the MAC. Uh, 19 runs on the season. Um, still looking for her first home run of the year, though. But in terms of extra base hits, she has gotten a couple doubles, a couple triples out of the season. There's the pitch, and that's fouled as she'll stay alive on the plate. Central Michigan, they're coming off of a game against the Michigan Wolverines, 24-ranked Michigan Wolverines, and they fell in that game 1-5. to five. But there were some things that the coach, uh, Coach Salomon, liked about the uh, performance of the girls. Yeah, she, you know, we, we talked to her in the pregame, and she was she was very happy about the performance as the full count pitches. And that one goes under Paoli, and it's going to be fielded by Allie England, but it will be a base hit for Tomy. So leadoff single, and she finds herself on first base. Yeah, as I was saying, she she was encouraged by a lot of what she saw against um, against Michigan. She said, you know, it was a good performance. Michigan just hit a little bit better, you know. And then, you know, she went on to say that that's really the, her biggest emphasis heading into this game is she wants hits and runs coming from all over her lineup, even from, you know, the ladies down in the six through nine spots. She thinks every spot is obviously important, but she really um, is focusing on getting everybody involved and getting as many runs as possible. 
1-0 count there for McKenzie Cole as they're going to take a little bit of a break right here to go talk over things. Uh, the next up, the hitter for Central Michigan is Shannon Stein. She's originally from Albuquerque, New Mexico, coming all the way up north to play her uh, baseball, or play her softball, sorry about that, softball at Central Michigan. She was academic All-Mac in 2021 and led Central Michigan in RBIs last year with 38. And uh, she's going to look to try to break that total. She already has 29 about halfway through Mac play. So off to a pretty solid start in her case. She's going to try to follow up the Abby Tomey single. Uh, but like you were saying, Ethan, with uh, what Coach Salman had, was saying, if the uh, people at the bottom of the order can be able to hit well, these people who are leading off at the one, two, three spots uh, can be able to drive them home. Yep. And, you know, if anybody's going to drive someone home, it's Shannon Stein. She has been the dang me most dangerous hitter in this lineup. 11 homers, 38 ribbies so far on the season. So watch out. That one's a little bit outside, but we'll see where it goes. And they're going to call it a strike. 1-1 one, one is the count, or 2-1 is the count. I apologize for that. <laughs> Shannon Stein sets up from the left of the plate. Mackenzie Cole settles herself, fires the pitch. Little rise ball that fouls off of Stein's bat going backwards. 2-2 two, two is the count. Yeah, well-pitched rise ball is just so hard to hit just when it's coming up, you know, into the zone like that. It's it's so incredibly hard to, you know, get good contact, and you saw it there. Kenzie Cole looking for a first strike out of the day. Delivers the pitch. That one's going to be fouled off of the bat and into – looks like the dugout, but it's – Caroline Spotcheck going over from the first base position to be able to make the catch, and that's going to be the first out of the day. Man, nice play. Um, not an easy one. She's kind of has to – Spotcheck has to reach over the heads of the Central Michigan players as they're kind of gathered over there in the dugout watching the game from the bench. Great heads-up play in the, in the face of the opponent. Yeah, I thought for sure that was just going to go right out into the dugout, but yeah. uh, Ali England – or Caroline Spotcheck, sorry about that, was able to go over there and make the catch, and now that's one out. Next batter up is McKaylee Valamont. She's had herself a really strong sophomore campaign with a 3.55 average, 10 RBIs, a couple of home runs on the year, and 33 hits. So she can also be pretty dangerous hitting in the third spot for the Chippewas. Yeah, you can see the consistency in the hitting is at the top of the lineup. That was the second pitch of the at-bat. 1-1 one, one is the count with one out. We are tied at zero at the top of the first here at OSF. Now, with their matchup last year on uh, these two teams, uh, Central Michigan ended up winning the series 3-1, to one, winning the last three straight to end off the year. And there was a lot of players that had impacts on the game uh, during that one. So um, all over the Central Michigan lineup, you had players that had pretty solid days. Um, next up for after um, Valamont is going to be Corberly, who also had two hits against OU. And um, that game ended up being a 8-7 victory in favor of the Chippewas. Uh, the Bobcats had a 6-1 lead in that game at one point, uh, but that was all nullified, and Central Michigan was able to get the big win on senior day. Yeah, that's a, that's a big comeback, and it happened against Miami in that early series. The Bobcats blew a, another big lead in one of those games, but I think they were able to come back and win that game. The 3-1 pitch, that one's going to be fouled back towards us and probably hit the top of the stands right there and then bounces into the crowd. 3-2 is the count, full count. But we've also seen uh, some points in the season, Ethan, where the Bobcats have been able to come back from a big deficit. Yeah. Against Marshall, they had a massive comeback, an emphatic comeback, where they ended up pulling off the victory. Uh, funny enough, by the same score as uh, the Central Michigan beat OU last year, 8-7. to seven. Here's the pitch, payoff pitch. That one's going to be popped out to first base. And right there is Caroline Spacek for her second catch of the day. That's the second out of the inning. Yeah, I think that, that meeting that they had on the mound really helped settle Cole down a little bit. You know, maybe just that hit, you know, it was in her mind a little bit. But then, you know, she, she's, she's really come back and started attacking this lineup. And now, you know, she's gotten two. After, you know, loading up the count both times, she's able to get two pop outs. Next in the lineup for the Chippewas is cleanup hitter Skylar Coberly. She has 301 average, 17 RBIs on the year, and she swings that one towards the shortstop. McMenemy gets it out to spot check, and that's going to be the end of the inning. No runner score, a leadoff single by Abby Tomey, but nobody else scored. All the other runners are retired, 
You're listening to Ohio Bobcat Softball on Ohio Bobcat TV. Warehouse Tire in Athens is your locally owned and operated auto and truck tire center. At Warehouse Tire, we focus on customer service with a professional staff and a huge inventory of wheels and tires for a variety of applications, including farm and industrial. We feature top brands, including Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Warehouse Tire is also a full-service auto service shop. Let us help with all of your under-vehicle maintenance, including brakes, shocks, struts, and alignments. Visit Warehouse Tire on Hebbardsville Road in Athens or online at warehousetireinc.com. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Ohio University Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. It's the bottom of the first at OSF, and the Bobcats are going to be up to hit as they have grabbed the bat. First up for the Bobcats, it'll be Allie England, the fifth-year senior. Her average is 3-5-0, has driven in 12 ribbies on the year, has 35 hits. And last time that she played against Central Michigan at the finale last year, she added a double and one run scored in that matchup against Central Michigan. Yeah, and England's a really good leadoff hitter. She's got 27 singles, so, you know, look for her to get on base here, and then, you, you know, all you need is one runner on base, and then you can just get it flowing. And that one's right in the strike zone from pitcher Grace Leto. Grace Leto, who's going to be starting in the circle for the Chippewas, is 9-8 and eight on the year from Eden Rapids, Michigan. Her ERA is 262, 93 strikeouts and 98 innings pitch, and has walked 29. And she fires that one a little bit upstairs. 1-1 one, one is the count. Yeah, I really look at that strikeout to walk ratio, and that is not a, not one you'd want to look at as an, from an Ohio perspective because that's a you know almost over three strikeouts before she'll walk, girl. So it's it's scary. She's a very good pitcher. She definitely is. As that one is driven out to left field and over the top of Kelsey Alexander, and that's going to be a sliding double leading off by Allie England. That's how you get a game started, Cedric. That is just about the perfect start from the plate you can have for the Bobcats. Englund just floats it right over the head of Kelsey Alexander in left field. And Alexander does a good job of recovering and getting the ball into second, but Englund's too fast, and that's a leadoff double. Next up in the lineup, batting second is Yasmin Logan. She averages a 304, has driven in 11 ribbies on the year, and has 21 hits. And in her last game against Ball State, she was two for four with a run scored. Now let's see if the Bobcats could take advantage here of this early opportunity. When you have a runner in scoring position early in the game like this, you have to take advantage and just get, get yourself on the front foot. 1-0 is the count. Grace Leto with the pitch. And that one is swing and a miss. 1-1 one, one is the count. And Grace Leto, the last time she mashed up against OU, uh, as a freshman, she pitched six and a third innings and struck out five, retired ten straight to start a game in that victory. And when she got into the game, the Chippewas were down 6-1, and by the time she exited the game, they were up 8-7 to seven as that one's out to the second baseman and got in time to first base. But that's going to advance Allie England to third base. Great base running. Really, really good base running. You know, she just heads up. You know, uh, the, the fielder over there at second just didn't really look. Um, Coberly just makes the easy play at first, and Anglin takes advantage. And now, you know, really all you need is one hit to the outfield, and you've got to run. One out in the inning, and Megan McMenemy is up. And Megan McMenemy was one of the players that Coach Salmon highlighted. Yeah, she was. We asked her, you know, what, which players, you know, stand out in this Ohio lineup, you know, who scares you? And McMenemy was the first name she mentioned, you know, just a consistent hitter, gets on base often and has a real opportunity to drive in some runs right here. Most certainly. She's batting 2-9-1 on the year, 13 RBIs, as well as two home runs on the year for the lefty. 
quickly down in the count here, though. So good work from Leto to get two quick fouls, and now she could try and get the strikeout, which could be crucial to this inning. Yep, two strikes, one out in the inning. Allie England on third. She hit a leadoff double to start the inning. And that one is low. Going to result in the ball. One, two is the count. Still in favor of Leto. Leto settles herself, fires that pitch in. It's going to be outside. 2-2 two, two is the count. And just trying to get McManamy to bite on one of those outside pitches, but good, good batting, you know, being able to recognize that it's outside and just taking it. Leto settles in, and there's contact. That's going to be fouled out towards the uh, Bob Wren Stadium. Actually ended up would have been fair in Ohio's baseball field, but going to be a foul ball here. 2-2 two, two, remains the count. Leto delivers the pitch. And check swing, and it's going to be full count, 3-2 as McMinimi stays alive, showing how difficult of an out she can be. Yeah, that was a close one. You know, it was upstairs. I wasn't in the zone. It was a ball called, and she almost went for it. But she was able to check her swing just about, went and checked with the third base umpire who gave her the call. Payoff pitch coming up for Leto. And there's some contact. That's going to be a fly out to center field. And the catch is made. And might be a chance for a sack fly, and it will be a sack fly as Ali England scores on the sacrifice fly by McMenemy. 1-0 Ohio Bobcats at the bottom of the first. Yeah, really, really good battle there between pitcher and hitter, just back and forth with the foul offs. Um, and in the end, McMenemy just gets good contact. Not, not far enough to get a home run, but far enough to get herself a sacrifice fly and get England home. So a good first inning for the Bobcats there on the board. Next up hitting for the Bobcats is Anna Leah Paoli. And she's going to bloop that one into right field, and she's able to get the base hit. And uh, she is the sixth best batting average in the MAC, and she shows why right there on that one, right before I could even name off yeah, any of her stats or anything. Up, she already hit the single. fifth by now. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, yeah, it's yeah, well, 380 average. It'll be higher than that now after that hit. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, the 380 average means she's getting a hit, you know, at, at least – if she has, let's say, three or four at-bats a game, she's getting at least one hit, if not more, pretty much every single game. And she's bucking the trend right there and just continuing to get hits. Yeah, she is on a roll in her sophomore campaign. Now next up is going to be Caroline Spacek, the senior. She averages at 3-1-0, has driven in 25 RBIs, and has four home runs on the year and quite a few extra base hits when we look down the list, 14 on the year. Yeah. Both of these two teams are at the top of a middle class that's very crowded in the MAC, as Bowling Green, Buffalo, and Ball State, as well as Akron, all have positive records in the MAC and are sitting right behind these two teams. That ball is fouled out. 0-2 is the count in favor of Grace Leto. A lot of these head-to-head -head tiebreakers will really matter when it comes down to the standings. Who can win two out of three in a series? Who can win three out of four in a series? It's all going to be able to matter a lot when it comes down to it. And that one is off the strike zone there. It's going to be foul ball. 0-2 is the count. Yeah, and um, just once again, uh, Spacek just doing a good job of staying alive. You know, she wasn't – that was a tough ball to put in play, but she's able to just get contact, stay alive, you know, get another chance. And that ball is a little bit of contact there, fouled into the back net. 2-2 two, two is still the count, or 0-2 oh, is still the count. Two yeah. outs in the bottom of the first. The Bobcats lead this game 1-0 off of an Alley England run and a Mega McMin or Megan McMinimi sacrifice fly. There's the pitch. That one's going to be blooped out to right field and caught by Shannon Stein. And that's going to be the end of the inning. Bobcats find themselves up 1-0 going into the second inning. You're listening to Ohio Bobcat TV.
Located on 741 East State Street, Steak and Shake is serving up handmade milkshakes, fresh pressed steak burgers, and crispy shoestring fries cooked right to order. Kick off your day with our breakfast served until 11 a.m. And don't forget to join us for happy hour drinks and shakes on weekdays from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. Left corner for three. Bang! And oh, baby, what a first half it's been. In sight, it must be right. We'll see you there at Steak and Shake Athens. If you can dream it, you can do it. Maybe your dream is to have a vacation cabin in the woods. Or maybe your dream is to open up a cat cafe. Uh, who ordered the milk? At Ohio University Credit Union, your dreams are our dreams, and we have the money to lend that will make them a reality. OUCU offers great loan rates, flexible terms, and fast responses on your application. Not a member? You can join. Really, stop by a branch or visit OUCU.org. Equal housing opportunity, loan subject to credit approval, fairly insured by NCUA, MLS number 433809. Welcome back to OSF. We are about to begin the second inning of the game. The Bobcats find themselves up 1-0 over Mac Rival Central Michigan. And the Bobcats were able to have a successful bottom of the first inning uh, with Allie England being able to find home off of a sacrifice fly from Megan McMinimi. And that's going to give them the 1-0 lead. Now for Central Michigan, it will be... Caitlin Britton, Kelsey Alexander, and Emily Bracamonte, who will be up in this inning. And that one is a strike to start the inning. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, now that Central Michigan playing from behind, will they get a little bit more aggressive? I know it's early, but, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen in a game of softball. So we'll see if, if Britton can get something going here at the top of the second. It is, and we saw what happened last time these two teams yeah. played, that the team that was hotter down the stretch ended up being able to pull off the victory. Exactly. You know, softball, anything can happen in any given half of an inning. So, you know, you always have to be ready. You know, someone in you know, Ohio in the last half of the inning just put together a little rally. You know, nothing too fancy or crazy, no home runs or anything, just manufactured a run, and that's how you have to do it. Caitlin Britton is a player who's batting 309 and has driven in 22 RBIs as the count is 1-2. And she has seven home runs on the year. Yeah, she also pitches as well. Um, she's got a 4-3-6 ERA on the season as well. She's not pitching today, though. See, Cole delivers a 1-2 pitch, and that's going to be strike three as she picks up her first strikeout of the day. Yeah, it looked like that one just had a little bit of drop off right at the end of the pitch just to sneak it into the top of the zone. Um, and he gets the punch out, the backwards K, the no look, or the, the no swing strikeout. Yep, it was quite the terrific pitch. Yeah. Now next up will be Kelsey Alexander for Central Michigan. She averages a 2.50, has driven in 14 RBIs, and has six, or, uh, five home runs on the year. And that first pitch is off the mark. 1-0 is the count. Kinsey Cole sets up, delivers the pitch. That's going to be outside. Count is 2-0. Kinsey Cole delivers the pitch. Going to be low and outside. 3-0 is the count. Yeah, now as a hitter, your mindset changes when the count goes to 3-0. You have to be smart, but you can also take a little bit of a risk. You can see, you know, if you can get a pitch that, you know, is deliberately in the zone to try and get that strike, maybe you can swing on it, get good contact, get it out of the park. Could be a good opportunity for Kelsey Alexander to do just that. As a 3-0 pitch is off the mark, that's going to be a... Ball number four will go down as a walk or can be seen as a wild pitch. Either way, it's going to be a first base for Kelsey Alexander. Yep, and that's just a good piece of hitting. You know, you, you see you see what comes to you and you just leave it alone. And sometimes there are four pitches there that weren't in the zone. Uh, and you, you, just, you just take your free base. Emily Bracamonte is up next for Central Michigan. She's seventh on their lineup. Her average is 2-1-0, has nine RBIs and two home runs as she drives that one deep to right field. And Tori Walker is there for the catch. Second out of the inning. 
And that that's a great response from Cole there, just to be able to, to get a pitch, get a pop out, get something in the zone, and then get a pop out, another quick out. Now, you're, now you have two outs, you can breathe a little bit easier. But job is not yet done in the inning for the Bobcats. Not at all. With two outs, Maddie Springer takes the plate. She has a 1-2-5 average, three RBIs on the year, and has five hits. And the first pitch is right on the money for a strike. 0-1 oh, is the count in favor of Mackenzie Cole. Yeah, that one just painted the outside corner beautifully. Really good pitch there from Cole. Mackenzie Cole did pitch last year against Central Michigan. And in five and two-thirds innings, she had three runs allowed, walked two, and struck out three last year. That's a drive to center field, and that one is caught by Jaz or Yasmin Logan, and that's going to end off the top of the second. Bobcats still lead 1-0. to zero. You're listening to Ohio Bobcat TV. When you order your groceries online with ClickList from Kroger, you can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And you'll save time, too. Try ClickList from Kroger with same-day pickup. Check it out at Kroger.com. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. These days, we're all doing a lot more virtually, which is why at Ohio Health, we've expanded our virtual care options and availability to make it even easier to get safe expert care at home. That includes virtual visits with over a thousand trusted providers in every medical specialty. Learn more about our virtual health options at ohiohealth.com slash virtual health. On a beautiful day at OSF, we're back for the bottom of the second inning. The Ohio Bobcats are up 1-0 over Central Michigan, and they're going to have a chance to bat again here in the inning. And Sophia Bernard is going to be up for the first time today for the Bobcats. The junior averages 1-9-6 at the plate, has seven RBIs and three home runs on the year. And that first pitch is outside, and that's going to be 1-0, a count favoring Sophia Bernard. Yeah, this is, this is again, as we talked about in the last thing, you have to take advantage of opportunities. And once again here, the Bobcats have a chance to extend their lead. Central Michigan's got to keep this game in, intact or it could get away from them. But then again, who knows? Because we saw in the last game between these two that anything is possible as that one is launched. Yep, there's a drive all the way out towards center field, and that's a home run. Hasta la vista. Sophia Bernard gets her fourth home run of the year as the Bobcats extend their lead 2-0. to zero. Yeah, you know, sometimes when you just hear that crack, you know. And that was an absolute no-doubter out to left center right over the 2-10 marker uh, on the outfield wall. It was an absolute laser beam straight out there on the frozen rope. And the Bobcats extend their lead just like I said. Bobcats with a great start on the day as number eight Tori Walker steps onto the plate for her first at bat of the day. Her average is 241, and she's driven in 13 RBIs as well as two home runs on the season. Here's the pitch, and that one's going to be fouled out for strike number two. Grace Leto delivering the 0-2 pitch. And that one's going to be a fly all the way out to left field and caught by Kelsey Alexander coming up from her left field position to be able to make the catch. And that'll be the first out of the inning. Yeah, one thing Central Michigan really prides themselves on is that fielding percentage. We talked about it with Coach in the pregame, and she said, you know, we have one of the best fielding percentages in the MAC. You know, we take pride in not 
you know, not making many errors. We take, you know, we it's one of our strengths. And you saw it right there, you know, the communication in the outfield. Some outfields might be a little discombobulated there. Maybe a ball drops. Not this outfield, not the Chippewas. Coming off of a two-hit performance against Ball State on Monday is Brooke Rice. Her average is 306. She's driven in 15 on the season um, for RBIs as well as four home runs on the year. And she'll look to be able to continue the Bobcats hot start. Grace Leto about to deliver the 1-0 pitch. And that one is fouled into the back netting. 1-1 is the count. The Bobcats are find themselves up 2-0 thanks to an Alley England score off of the Megan McMenemy sacrifice fly. And then to begin the second inning, Sophia Bernard hit a home run to center field. And now the Bobcats find themselves up 2-0. The 1-1 pitch outside. 2-1 is the count. Yeah, the Bobcats have already done a lot better today than they did in their la the last time they ended up going against Grace Leto. You know, Leto last time, we mentioned it earlier, you know, six and a third, struck out five, retired ten in a row to start. Today the Bobcats have done a better job of just getting good contact and getting runs in. And that one's going to be grounded to the shortstop, and then that's going to be delivered just in time to the first baseman, Shannon Stein, second out of the inning. Not an easy play there for Maddie Springer. You know, it bounces kind of over Grace Leto's head, a little bit of an awkward play, but great fielding. Just, you know, picks it up, nice and easy throw over to Stein at first, and that's out number two. Hit in ninth for the Bobcats, it's Lauren Juhas, the freshman. She averages 2-0-0 as her batting average. Her RBI total is three on the year, and she also has two home runs in her freshman campaign. There's the first pitch, and that's going to be right down Broadway for a strike. 0-1 is the count. Grace Leto settles in. Sends out for the next pitch, and that's going to be another strike right in the zone. 0-2 is the count. Yeah, Juhas down early. Can she fight it back? You know, two really good pitches there. Got, got Juhas looking both times. Grace Leto looks for her first strikeout of the day here in the second inning. Livers the pitch. That one's going to be upstairs. 1-2 is the count. Juhas doing a great job of not going up for that one. Yeah, it's one of the most important parts of, of hitting is just, we, we talked about it earlier, is just being aware and being smart with your swings. And so far, Yuha says hasn't swung the bat yet. Twice in the zone, once for a good ball take. And she does give a swing there. That one's going to foul off the, her bat back into the back netting. 1-2 is the count as she remains alive. And, uh, you know, they, that's the old adage is, is staying alive as a hitter. And, you know, that's not an easy pitch to get good contact on there as it was down and away. Might have even been a ball, but a good a good cut and uh, you know foul off to keep the keep the at bat alive. Grace Leto in the yellow jerseys and maroon pants delivers a pitch outside. Two two is the count with two outs. The Bobcats they are up in this game two zero after a sacrifice fly by Megan McMenemy, which scored Allie England and a home run from Sophia Bernard at the beginning of the inning. There's the pitch. Lauren Juhas gets that one out on a line drive to left field, and Kelsey Alexander steps up to make the catch. That's the end of the second inning. Bobcats score one, and they are up 2-0. You're listening to Ohio Bobcat TV. Let's go Cats. Let's go Labatt Blue Light. When you drink a pristine Canadian Pilsner, you're good at beer. Bobcats fans, grab a Labatt Blue Light and be good at beer. Always enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2021 Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All rights reserved. Labatt, registered U.S. trademark of Labatt Brewing Company, LTD. We've all seen the tragedies associated with drug activity and impaired driving in our state. This is Trooper Conkler of the High State Highway Patrol's Athens Post. We need everyone's help to keep drugs out of our communities, keep impaired drivers off our roads, and get people to make good decisions when driving. Traffic and community safety is the responsibility of everyone. You can do your part in calling pound 677 to report drug activity and impaired or reckless drivers to law enforcement. 
Together we can make Ohio a safer place to live and travel. Welcome back to OSF as the third inning is about to be underway as Samantha Mills of Central Michigan will be leading off in this inning and she'll be followed by one and two in the count, Abby Tolmey and Shannon Stein as Central Michigan tries to get on the board as they find themselves down zero to two. Yeah, ever since that, as the first pitch comes in, ever since that first um, runner from the, the leadoff hitter came in, the, they've kind of struggled to manufacture consistent offense. Um, you know, a couple, you know, the walk, um, the one hit, but they, you know, uh, Mackenzie Cole's done a good job of manufacturing pop-ups and getting a couple strikeouts as well. Yep, still plenty of game left to go as the count right now is at 0-2 after that foul ball. Mackenzie Cole, who's registered already one strike for the day, will try to look for her second one at this at bat. And Samantha Mills, she averages a 1.67 as her batting average, eight RBIs driven in, and as well as one home run on the year from the lefty. And that one's off the mark for a ball. One, two was the count. So again, it's an absolute beautiful day here in Athens, Ohio, after a pretty rainy week where we've had some sketchy weather. It's very nice to have a beautiful day like this. But that one is high, and that's going to be a ball. Two, two is the count. Yeah, after just this week, it really just hasn't been. And the Ohio softball team's had to deal with it a little bit as well. They've had some games this year that have been, you know, delayed and, some games that haven't been able to be played, but you know, finally they get a, just a perfect day here for softball. Can't stress it enough. It's like 60, it's sunny, and really just a beautiful day to watch and take in some softball. And that one's going to be a ground ball out to the shortstop, and shortstop delivers it to Caroline Spacek in time. What a great play by Megan McMinimi. Yeah, just that's a fielding clinic right there. It's just able to, you know, it looks like that one might have just squeaked through the gap, but instead, no, she backhands easy transition from glove to hand and then just darts on a frozen rope to first. Easy out. Abby Tomey is back up. Uh, she opened the game with a single for Central Michigan, and that's been the only hit they've had so far on the day. That one is low and outside. 1-0 is the count. Abby Tomey trying to capture some of the magic she had last year against OU. She had three hits, then has one hit so far on the day as that one is a little bit inside, it looks like. 1-0. Actually, 2-0. Yeah, there we go. Kenzie Cole delivers the pitch. And that's going to be in the strike zone for a strike, 2-1. Since 2011, OU is 9-12 and 12 against Central Michigan, and Central Michigan has won three straight in the series. So it was 9-9 nine, nine before that. There's the pitch, 2-1, and that one's in the strike zone once again, 2-2, two, two, as McKenzie Cole has evened up the count. Yeah, and as you mentioned earlier in this one, it's such a pivotal series in terms of back positioning. Whoever wins this series could, you know, Get, put themselves to be that team right behind the Miami Red Hawks in terms of competing for that regular season title. And that one's going to be fouled to the left, our third base side. And she's going to stay alive here at the plate. Zabby Tomey, really difficult out. That's why they have her leading off here for Central Michigan. And their yellow jerseys, maroon pants, going against the Bobcats in their white home jerseys and white pants. And we saw it in the first at-bat where t um, Cole was able to load the count and then um, told me he was able to fly one or get a ground ball over into right field and got a base hit. There was a blooper outside, and Analia Paoli tried to reach out for it, unable to make the catch, but still in foul territory. And we remain with this at bat for Abby Tolmy. Good effort from Paoli almost. It kind of was just at that awkward angle where she can't really put her glove up in front of her but it, she also can't like reach around it was really just the worst possible spot for her to catch it in terms of where she was just running backwards to try and get it good effort but uh, wasn't able to make the play yeah it would have been a over the shoulder type yeah. of catch almost uh, to put that into comparison 
But 2-2 is the count with one out. The Bobcats are up 2-0 after two productive innings. They scored one in the first, and they scored one in the second. Central Michigan, only one hit on the day. Yeah, and it was from the lady who's up right now, Abby Tolmey. Can she replicate it? And that one's right in the strike zone for strike number three. And that is the second strike out, or strike of the, or second strike out of the day for Mackenzie Cole. I think you saw Cole kind of learn her lesson from the last told told me at bat there. She was able to get a couple RBIs and then, um, or sorry, a couple of um, foul balls off, and then uh, she kind of just fired that one right at her and dared her to say, "Yeah, do it again." And that time it was kind of a half check swing from Tolmy, but she wasn't able to make contact. Shannon Stein is back up. Last time she had a fly ball to shallow right field, and that one catch was made by the first baseman, Caroline Spacek, for yeah. the first out of the game. Yeah, Stein's also from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I know that there's got to be some uh, Breaking Bad fans out there. Better Call Saul series starts on Monday. I'm really looking forward to that. I bet if we got time with all the exams going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll definitely be um, a late night kind of thing. But, um, yeah, just the, um, the New Mexico to Central Michigan is certainly an uh, interesting path. But um, she's, she's certainly raking for the Chippewas. Definitely a lot colder up here, I'll say that. <laughs> hey, oh, for sure. The 1-1 pitch, that one's going to be grounded out and going to be considered in foul territory as Paoli did feel that one. But it's going to be a foul ball nevertheless. That was close. It looked like it was almost fielded in play. I, it was right near the line by my view. It definitely could have gone either way. Two outs. McKenzie Cole, the 1-2 pitch coming up. Delivers the pitch outside. 2-2. Two -two. Shannon Stein looking to avoid going 0-2 for the day. McKenzie Cole looking to find her way. Uh, retire another runner yet again, going for her fourth in a row. And that one's going to be fouled towards the third base side. Stein remains alive. Yeah, it seems like Central Michigan are just a little bit ahead of these pitches, um, you know, because they keep fouling it off t um, to our left the, down the third baseline. Um, you know, it just means that that bat is getting to the pitch a little bit ahead of the plate, and it's just causing that hook to the left and the foul balls. Kenzie Cole sets up in the circle, looks towards her coaches, looks towards the plate, delivers the pitch outside, but a little bit fouled right off of the bat of Stein at the top of it. 2-2 two -two remains the count as the pitch count starting to go up at this at bat. Yeah, that's what, what I would suggest if I were Mackenzie Cole. Is you, I think it worked on the last at bat with Tomies. You got to just fire a heater in there because, you know, that'll get, it'll get the ball by the bat, you know, quicker and it'll cause a little bit of problem for these, you know, these kind of later swings. We'll see if McKenzie Cole dials up the fastball, and she does dial it up right there and down Broadway for the strikeout. That's the end of the top of the third, and the Bobcats still lead 2-0 to zero as McKenzie Cole is pitching a shutout right now. You're listening to Ohio Bobcat TV. The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer, please call us at 800-321-8293. We're here for you. Bobcat fans, the Hugh White Family of Dealerships is your hometown Athens dealer. And to show our commitment to the community, we're offering free car washes for Ohio University students and faculty, as well as college grad discounts with all of our new brands. But that's not all. We provide free concierge service for faculty. We'll pick up your vehicle and drop it back off after service. Take advantage of our leases in under $200 per month. Come visit us on North Columbus Road, less than five minutes from campus or online at visithughwhite.com. And remember, if the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. Welcome back to OSF as the Bobcats have themselves a lead 2-0 going into the bottom of the third. 
the top of the order is back up to bat as Allie England, Yasmin Logan, and Megan McMenemy are on deck to go and hit as that one has popped up into the air. The catch is made by Emily Bracamonte, and that is the first out of the inning. Lickety split just in a snap. And the next up will be Yasmin Logan. Yasmin Logan grounded out in the first inning. And she's originally from Pittsburgh, Penn Hills. Leto delivers the pitch. That one's inside. 1-0 one -oh is the count. Now Logan had a productive uh, outing in her last one. Uh, two for four with a run in Ohio's last game against Ball State. So we'll see if she can replicate that today. Pitch a little bit outside this time. 2-0. The Bobcats are 5-4 at home since 2011 against Central Michigan, and they've averaged four and a third runs in those games. That one's grounded out to the shortstop, and Yasmin Logan rushes for the plate, but that ball gets there in time, and that's going to be a quick second out of the inning for the Central Michigan Chippewas on another solid play by Maddie Springer. Yeah, once again, you can just see the, the fielding prowess here all around. You know, there have been some really, really tidy plays in the field. I think that's the best way to sum it up is tidy. You know, that one, you know, the same play from Springer. She's just able to reel it in and just make a nice, simple throw over to first. And quick runner as well from, from Logan, but is able to beat it out. Central Michigan is definitely the type of team where they're not going to beat themselves. No, absolutely not. And with, you know, as talented a team as they are, especially in the field, um, they're going to be tough to beat with a 970 fielding percentage. Megan McMinimi is back up. She had a sacrifice fly earlier on the day, which ended up scoring um, Allie England. And that was the first run of the day for the Bobcats. The other run coming off of a Sophia Bernard home run in the second, leading that inning off. 2-0 is the count in favor of Megan McMinimi as she settles in at the plate. And she swings. It's going to be right between center, or, uh, between the second baseman and the shortstop, and that's going to be a base hit, a standing single for Megan McMenemy. Yeah, another just solid piece of hitting for Megan McMenemy. You know, in the in the first, she was able to get the sacrifice fly by just getting contact, getting the ball in the air into the outfield. And on this one, she was just able to find the gap in the defense. Just you know, put throw it right in between. Um, the shortstop and second baseman right past on the left of second base, and it's a pretty routine single for her. Analia Paoli is back up with the sixth best batting average in the MAC, and she swings and misses on that first pitch there from Grace Leto. Both teams, in terms of batting, are in the top half of the conference right now. The Bobcats are third in the conference, while Central Michigan is sixth. So on the plus side of the conference for both of them as that ball hits Analia Paoli, she goes down. And we'll take a break. Uh, we'll be back. Hopefully she is all right. You're listening to Ohio Bobcat TV. And we're back at OSF as Analia Paoli decides to get up, and she's able to uh, overcome the injury a little bit. Uh, she ended up taking a fastball right there to the cheek as it looked like it went right between her batting helmet and her face, but she showed a lot of great toughness and decides to continue being out there to run. That's going to go down as a walk as she was hit by pitch, and she advances to first 
and that'll advance Megan McMenemy to second base. Bobcats lead the game 2-0, and Central Michigan will want a little bit of time to be able to settle things down with Grace Leto, uh, as a couple of Bobcats have been able to reach the base. And hopefully this gives Paoli some more time to be able to rest and recover a little bit. But Yeah, it looks like luckily that ball bounced right off the helmet, which is great. You know, um, it's rather there than, you know, off of her head or anything like that. So very good. It seems like she's up and moving better now she jogged over to uh, first base after being down for a little bit so good to see that she's up and seemingly okay but yeah this is a big spot right here two outs um, the Bobcats have just got thrown a little two out rally together you know the single um, single from McMenemy and then the, now the hit by pitch for Paoli and now all of a sudden you know after an inning that was cruising along for the Chippewas now you know they're just in a little bit of trouble here as now Caroline Spacek who just loves RBIs steps up to the plate to potentially drive in what could be a basically just a gimme run, really, if you're Central Michigan. Caroline Spacek, the last time she was up at the plate in the first, she ended up uh, having a fly ball to the first baseman, and that ended up ending the first inning, or ending the first inning. There's a little tongue twister right there. Ending the first inning, and we'll see if she can be able to keep this inning going right here. First pitch is on the mark for a strike. 0-1 oh, is the count. And Spachek's already got 25 RBIs on the year. So if you want anybody up in this spot, Caroline Spachek would be pretty high on your list if you're the Bobcats. We'll see what she could conjure up here down 0-1 oh, early in the count. Leto delivers the pitch. That one's going to be fouled off for a quick strike two. Leto still looking for her first strikeout on the day. On the season, she has 93 of them, so she's approaching the 100 mark. That one is outside. 1-2 is the count. Caroline Spacek staying alive right now at the at-bat. Leto delivers a pitch. That one's going to be a drive to center field, and the catch is made by Abby Tolmy, and that's going to be the end of the inning. Bobcats strand two, or leave two on base, and that's the end of the inning. Bobcats up 2-0. We've all seen the tragedies associated with drug activity and impaired driving in our state. This is Trooper Conkler of the High State Highway Patrol's Athens Post. We need everyone's help to keep drugs out of our communities, keep impaired drivers off our roads, and get people to make good decisions when driving. Traffic and community safety is the responsibility of everyone. You can do your part in calling pound 677 to report drug activity and impaired or reckless drivers to law enforcement. Together we can make Ohio a safer place to live and travel. Let O'Neill Hartman Insurance show you how Grange's strong value and fast claim service delivers league-leading coverage. O'Neill Hartman Insurance will find you a Grange auto policy that balances competitive rates and responsive Grange claim service. O'Neill Hartman Insurance considers Grange their go-to company for their combination of great value and outstanding claim service. Call O'Neill Hartman at 740-797-4685 or visit them online at O'NeillHartman.com. And we're back at OSF with the Bobcats leading 2-0 over the Chippewas of Central Michigan. And uh, even it looks like we have some birthdays in the house is uh, Brooke Rice, the catcher for the Ohio Bobcats. She's celebrating her birthday today. Yeah, happy birthday to her. And I think the Bobcats are looking to get her that birthday W. So far, they're on the right track. They're up 2-0 here as we enter the top of the fourth. Central Michigan's offense has struggled. Mackenzie Cole has shut them down since... Uh, since Abby Tolmy's leadoff hit in the first inning, nothing in terms of hits for the Chippewas. A, a walk, I believe, was the only other base runner that Mackenzie Cole has surrendered. So she is at the top of her game today, and the Chippewas are going to have to get something going here if they want to get back into this one. Mackenzie Cole has three strikeouts on the day and has retired five straight. And on that one, she almost makes the catch. She drops the ball, but she delivers it out to Caroline Spacek for the out, making that retiring six straight. 
And that was a pretty good heads up play by yeah. Mackenzie Coles. That came right back to her, and she was able to settle herself and throw that one off to Caroline Spacek. And that's a quick one out in the inning. Yeah, I think the ump was going to give it to her. Um, she had it in her hands, and I think it was in the process of transferring the ball to her hand is where it, it, it slipped out. And I think the ump was going to give her the catch, but she threw her out anyway because I think the hitter wasn't quite ready for it either. <laughs> that one is upstairs, making the count 1-0. Uh, Skylar Coberly is back up now for Central Michigan. The last time she was out um, was at the end of the first inning as she grounded out and will look to try to get her first hit of the day. Pitch is delivered a little outside. 2-0 is the count in favor of Coberly. And we'll see if she decides to take a potential swing here at Central Michigan. Like you said, Ethan, it's been very difficult for them to get hits today. Mm -hmm. they, they've struggled to manufacture any form of offense. They've, you know, tightened it up on defense, especially in that last inning. I mean, they've been good on defense, but, you know, they've, they're down two runs. they got to get something going. And that speaks to the type of game Mackenzie Cole has had. Uh, but right now she finds herself in a little bit of trouble. 3-0 is the count. Yeah, that, that last one was close. I think, you know, it could have gone either way, um, maybe – given that one to the Chippewas, but now Cole's got to fight back, try and find something here. Cole delivers the pitch, and that one's going to be low, and that's going to be a walk, the second one of the day for the Chippewas. That's exactly what you need. Uh, you got to get you got to get runners on base uh, to get back in the game. And so far, you know, they've struggled to do that, but there's a walk, and now um, Rice is over to have a chat with Cole about this next hitter who is, I believe, Britain, Caitlin Britton it is. Yep, you're correct about that, Ethan. Caitlin Britton yeah, is a dangerous be hitter up. as well, so you got to be careful here. 22 RBIs and seven home runs on the year. Not somebody you want to face in a spot like this. Not at all. And earlier today, she struck out looking, so Mackenzie Cole won round one between the two. But Britton's going to look to try to change that at this at-bat. Yeah, and I mean, that speaks to the, the quickness of a softball game here because one swing of the bat, we have a tie game. So we'll, we'll see what happens here in this at-bat. It's a big spot, you get the feeling. Kenzie Cole has other plans, though, as she delivers the first pitch. 1-0 is the count. It's fifth straight ball. Kenzie Cole, her stats on the day. Once again, she has three strikeouts and has put together a shutout through three in a third inning. And that one is right down Broadway for a strike. Mackenzie Cole delivers a great pitch on the outside of the zone. Yeah, great pitch just to get back in the groove, get back into that, uh, get back in that strike zone. Now, you know, she'll get that confidence back that she's had all game. The 1-1. One, one. And that one's going to be grounded right. Oh, almost picked off, and that is going to be a double play. As that is a fantastic catch by Megan McMenemy and a quick throw to Caroline Spacek to pick off. Skyler Coberly at first to double play, and that's going to end off the top of the fourth inning. Bobcats still up 2-0 after some terrific fielding. You're listening to Ohio Bobcat TV. Jumpstart your day at the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Athens. Enjoy complimentary hot breakfast, then unwind on our beautiful outdoor patio, which includes a gas fire pit and barbecue grill. Conveniently located on East State Street, just a short drive from the Ohio University campus and uptown Athens, the Fairfield Inn and Suites is situated near many shopping and dining venues. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites, you're our number one priority. Call 740-589-5839 to book your next visit to Athens or find us online at fairfieldinn.com. Hi, this is Jared Dean with Dean Heating and Cooling. As your local Tempstar dealer, you can experience superior home comfort with Tempstar game-changing technology. Whether you need a fall tune-up or a midwinter repair call, our expert technicians will make sure your heating system is running at peak performance. Count on Dean Heating and Cooling and Tempstar to keep you cozy all winter long. Find us online at deanheatingandcooling.com and go Cats! Welcome back to OSF. The Bobcats a 2-0 lead here at OSF thanks to some fantastic fielding 
by Megan McMenemy at the end. It was a 6-3 double play, which ended up ending off the inning, or ending off the top of the inning, rather, for the Chippewas. Yeah, it was it was a little bit of an awkward spot to be in if you're uh, if you're Coberly at first because it looks like your typical kind of double play ball to the shortstop, um, you know, for the classic 6-4-3 double play as that one's fouled back. Um, but in the end, it was caught on the fly by McMenemy, and she's just able to fire a bullet over to spot check at first. And I just think Coberly was kind of caught in two minds. She didn't know, you know, because you have to run. Um, but, she, you know, with the drop, and it was just an awkward spot for the ball to be, and it was just spot, uh, you know, the arm was really good. And that ball is grounded out, and that's going to be a standing single for the leadoff hitter of the fourth inning, Sophia Bernard, as she grounded that one uh, out to the left, third base side, and she was able to get first base on the hit. And next up, and it looks like they're going to have a pinch runner for her. It's going to be Emily Walker, the sophomore, is going to come in for Sophia Bernard as a pinch runner. So a good day at the plate for Bernard. Uh, the home run back in the second um, to extend the Bobcat lead to two. And then um, there's another, that kind of bloop single is just another one that was just in an awkward spot. Kind of blooped right over the third baseman and, um, you know, right in there for a single. Yep, she is two for two on the day. And now Tori Walker is up. She had a fly out to left field the last time she was up. And that one is delivered right down the middle for a strike, 0-1. Bobcats have found a lot more success against Leto compared to where they were last year as Leto shut down the Bobcats, only allowing one run. Today they already have two halfway through the game. And another strike as she delivers two straight great pitches, 0-2 is the count. Yeah, watch out for Walker here on the potential stolen base as well. She's three for three so far on the year, so we'll see if she goes for it again. With no outs, we'll see what happens. 0-2 pitch. Outside. Here's a chance for the steal. And it's called safe. The Bobcats are able to steal a base. Emily Walker advances from first to second. I think that just looked like a good slide. It was a good throw. Really good throw from uh, the catcher uh, Samantha Mills, but I, I looked from our vantage point up here, it kind of just looked like Walker just evaded the tag from Coberly at second. 1-2 pitch, fouled. Count remains 1-2. It, it looked like everything was on the money there for, for the Chippewas in terms of getting the runner out there. Looked like the throw was in time, the tag was good, but I guess just it's hard to see from the, where we are back here, but it looks like it was just a good – Maybe a good little piece of shimminess from Emily Walker to just kind of shake her way around it. Yeah, they just had to make the tag, but they were unable to do that. One-two pitch. Swing and miss. Strike three. And that'll be the first out of the fourth inning. Yeah, first strike out there for, um, for Leto. So what you like to see if you're the Chippewas is that she's maybe starting to find a groove. Next up is the woman whose birthday is today, Brooke Rice. And earlier today, she grounded out and is looking for a birthday hit. First pitch is outside. And now would be a great time for it as well with the runner in scoring position on second here and a pretend, a ch another chance for the Bobcats to potentially extend this lead. And that one's right down the strike zone. 1-1 one, one is the count. Brooke Rice, a fifth-year senior from Mason, Ohio, has been on the team for a while, getting an opportunity to be able to play another year thanks to uh, the COVID year and being able to get an extra season for all the players. And she's been great as a leader for the Bobcats this year. And that one's outside, strike two, as there was a swing. Yeah, that, that COVID year is really cool because it allows like a lot of these players to get extra years. Like we, we mentioned both walkers here recently, the one who just struck out and the one on the bases right now, they're sisters, and they wouldn't have gotten that chance to play if it weren't for that COVID year. So that's really cool to see. It is quite cool. There's a swing and miss for strike three. That is the second strikeout of the inning 
for Grace Leto as she has settled into the game a little bit in the center. Yeah, working her way out of the runner jam here as uh, that one, she just she just got Rice there. Um, you know, that pitch is outside, well out of the zone, but she was able to just fool Rice with that movement and get her to swing at a pitch way outside. Last time Lauren Juhas was up, she had a fly out to left field. And so far on the day, um, yeah, 0 for 1. And she misses the ball right there. 0 and 1 is the count. And she is a freshman from West Mifflin High School in Pennsylvania. Is having a solid freshman campaign and will only continue to get better here at OU. And that pitch is right down the center. And yet again, another strike from Grace Leto. Yeah, this has been Leto's most consistent inning these past three batters. She's just found that groove that we're, that, you know, I think most Chippewas fans are kind of used to seeing from her. Um, you know, really two good strikeouts and a potential for another one right here. And that was close. Yep, that one is just outside. One, two is the count. Bobcats have Emily Walker, who is on second base after a steal. She is pinch running in the spot of Sophia Bernard, who's hit a home run earlier today. One, two pitch. Swing, and that's going to be a foul ball out to the back netting. One, two is the count. Juhas remaining alive at the plate. Leto settles in in the circle, delivers a pitch, and that one's off the mark. 2-2 two, two is the count. Bobcats lead 2-0 off of five hits so far on the day. Central Michigan, zero runs off of one hit on the day. Leto delivers the pitch. That one's upstairs, full count. 3-2, two, two outs. After it was 0-2, UAS has worked it into 3-2. Payoff pitch coming up. Swing and miss. That's the end of the fourth inning. Bobcats strand one. And the score is still 2-0. Bobcats in the lead. You're listening to Ohio Bobcat TV. Hi, this is Jared Dean with Dean Heating and Cooling. As your local Tempstar dealer, you can experience superior home comfort with Tempstar game-changing technology. Whether you need a fall tune-up or a midwinter repair call, our expert technicians will make sure your heating system is running at peak performance. Count on Dean Heating and Cooling and Tempstar to keep you cozy all winter long. Find us online at deanheatingandcooling.com and go Cats! You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. But up, 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 up. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Welcome everybody to the fifth inning of Ohio Bobcats softball. The Bobcats are up 2-0 to zero over the Central Michigan Chippewas in a battle for sole possession of second place in the MAC. Bobcats once again only trail Miami by a few games and Miami's only two losses in conference came to the Ohio Bobcats. So the Bobcats will have that head to head if they can be able to match their record. But for now, the Bobcats have to focus on the task at hand as they deliver the 0-0 pitch. And that one is gonna be off the mark for a ball. But if the Bobcats can continue to stay in the race, stay ahead of the rest of the pack in the MAC, they have a shot at a regular season title. Yeah, this Bobcat team is right there, you know, for the, um you know, it, since 2018, they haven't been able to get back to the NCAA tournament. They've got a real shot at doing it this year. It's it's possible. And that one is fouled out into the dugout. Caroline Spacek tried to make another catch like she did to open the game, uh, but was unable to get into the dugout. As it almost seemed like the Central Michigan players kind of boxed out her opportunity <laughs> from trying to make that catch. Yeah, it's, you know what? 
you know, that would have been a tough play regardless. But, you know, there wasn't anybody itching to move out of the way there, you know. <laughs> of course, of course. 1-1 one, one is the count. Kenzie Cole, who's had herself a solid day game, delivers the pitch. And that one is a little off. 2-1 is the count. That one looked pretty close. That's She's had two of those two pitches on the, the, the three pitches of this at bat, the foul ball and the two other pitches were both very close to the zone. So she's right there. But um, in the end, it's a 2-1 count, and it's a hitter's count. Close count, and that one is going to be fouled off of the bat of Kelsey Alexander. Last time she was up, she ended up uh, getting walked. Now Mackenzie Cole sets up in the circle. Looks to her coaches. Looks to Brooks Rice. Delivers the pitch. And that one is going to be considered fair as that one looked like it was close to being foul. And it looks like they are going to call it a foul as I felt that was a foul ball that went out of bounds yeah, right before was, third base. It was definitely past the third baseline. I think the biggest question was did it touch Analia, Analia Paoli's glove? I... It didn't look like it did, so the foul ball looked like the right call there. Count remains 2-2 as McKenzie Cole sets up once again in the circle. Probably a break for Ohio as well because that ball was all the way down in the corner. That could have been a double or even a triple. Yeah, it certainly had some mustard on it. There's the pitch. That one is inside. 3-2 is the count. Count is full. Zero outs, fifth inning of play on a beautiful afternoon in Athens. And I'm sure the Bobcats are really thankful for that opportunity yeah. given they had to have a rain delay against Ball State in their last time out. And now they get a nice weather day here. Great day for softball. Mackenzie Cole delivers the pitch. That one's going to be driven out to the right field and caught by Tori Walker as she gets herself underneath that one, makes the catch. First out of the inning. Yeah, just another solid, solid, solid work from Mackenzie Cole today. And there's another example of just working a count, you know, keeping keeping yourself in front of the hitter and then just getting getting the ball in the air to an outfielder. Um, it's not easy, but she's really done well today. And she's so far pitching a great baseball game through, uh, through four and a third innings. Next up, it's Emily Bracamonte who gets – uh, where Mackenzie Cole dials and delivers her a strike on that first pitch. But Emily Bracamonte, she had a fly out to right field earlier today back in the second inning. The 0 1 pitch. It's going to be driven out to left field this time, and Allie England is there for the catch. Two runners up, two runners down. Yeah, that was a uh, it's good contact from um, from the hitter there, but just not enough. You know, uh, that's you know Cole done a good job of just keeping things enclosed, getting pop outs to to her outfielders, um, and so far, you know, the biggest thing that she can be happy about is that big zero on the scoreboard for Central Michigan as of right now. Is. Central Michigan came into the game being the team known for having great fielding, but so far it's been the Bobcat fielding that has been very impressive on the day. Yeah, I think the play of the day so far was that double play from the last inning where, um, you know, we, we kind of broke it down during the last half. But, you know, uh, that, that, that was a, a stunning play from uh, uh, McMenemy and Spotcheck in the infield to um, potentially save, uh, to get the double play and just save some time. Maddie Springer is up for the Chippewas. Last time she was up, it was back in the second inning, and she had a fly out to center field. So 0 for 1 on the day. 1-1 one, one is the count. Two outs. Bobcats are up 2-0. Scores on the day were Allie England off of a sacrifice fly from Megan McMinimi and a home run by Sophia Bernard as that one is driven out to right field and in foul territory as Tori Walker tried to make a diving attempt to make the catch. Unable to, but that does result in a strike on the foul ball. 1-2 is the count. Another close one there, you know, like the one earlier in the inning, which was on down the third baseline. This one's down the first baseline, and if that one drops in, it could very easily have been a triple with the speed, um, you know, running around away from where the baseball was. Uh, it could have been multiple extra bases. Kinsey Cole in the white jersey delivers the pitch. Fouled out to the third base side as Central Michigan is starting to get good contact on the ball, but they cannot keep it fair. Oh, 
When you look at this game, Ethan, the Bobcats have controlled it for a majority of it so far, but it still is only a two zero yeah. game so it is a little closer than it may appear exactly you know i think that's the biggest thing is that ohio have, have been the better team they've you know taken control of of the game as that pitch was upstairs for two two i they've been you know the more dominant team they've got you know five hits to two and they're up to nothing right now but as i mentioned earlier in this game one one or two mistakes and this could be a tie or even a central michigan lead just like that one swing of the bat and that's the beauty about softball is that one swing is all it takes sometimes. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But Central Michigan are by no means out of this one, even though so far their, their offense has very much been held in check. Um, this, is, this game is not over. There's still plenty of softball left to play. Maddie Springer has been staying alive here at the bat. Mackenzie Cole doing what she can to potentially retire her. Twos across the board as there's two balls, two strikes, two outs in the fifth inning, and there's going to be a pop fly out to it, and two Ohio Bobcats run into each other, and that's going to be a potential triple and will be out as Analia Paoli is able to tag Maddie Springer out as she went for the triple, and that's going to be the third out of the inning. There are some injured Bobcats, but will be the end of the inning. We'll go to break. Bobcats still remain in the lead, 2-0. to zero. You're listening to Ohio Bobcat TV. You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero, when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. At People's Bank, our vision is to be the best community bank in America. We focus on building relationships with our clients and offering cutting-edge financial products. People's Bank is proud to support the local communities in which we work and live. This is Ashley Brown, People's Bank Vice President and Regional Manager, and we would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank, working together, building success. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The road to a championship is built on years of practice and hard work. That's true in basketball and the construction industry. The apprenticeship and upgrade training programs provided by the Athens Area Union Building Trades produces the workforce with the most modern skills and cutting edge knowledge in the industry. The key to success to the Bobcats on the floor is the same as your choice on the work site. The winning move is working with members of the Athens Area Union Building Trades, proud sponsor of Ohio University Basketball. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are one. Learn more at CareSource.com. Jumpstart your day at the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Athens. Enjoy complimentary hot breakfast, then unwind on our beautiful outdoor patio, which includes a gas fire pit and barbecue grill. Conveniently located on East State Street, just a short drive from the Ohio University campus and Uptown Athens, the Fairfield Inn and Suites is situated near many shopping and dining venues. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites, you're our number one priority. Call 740-589-5839 to book Athens or find us online at fairfieldinn.com.
Tori Walker is the Bobcat down. She is receiving some medical attention, and we will come back when play resumes. Warehouse Tire in Athens is your locally owned and operated auto and truck tire center. At Warehouse Tire, we focus on customer service with a professional staff and a huge inventory of wheels and tires for a variety of applications, including farm and industrial. We feature top brands, including Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Warehouse Tire is also a full-service auto service shop. Let us help with all of your under-vehicle maintenance, including brakes, shocks, struts, and alignments. Visit Warehouse Tire on Hebbardsville Road in Athens or online at warehousetireinc.com. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Ohio University Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Located on 741 East State Street, Steak and Shake is serving up handmade milkshakes, fresh pressed steak burgers, and crispy shoestring fries cooked right to order. Kick off your day with our breakfast served until 11 a.m. And don't forget to join us for happy hour drinks and shakes on weekdays from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. Left corner for three. Bang! And oh, baby, what a first half it's been. In sight, it must be right. We'll see you there at Steak and Shake Athens. If you can dream it, you can do it. Maybe your dream is to have a vacation cabin in the woods. Or maybe your dream is to open up a cat cafe. Uh, who ordered the milk? At Ohio University Credit Union, your dreams are our dreams, and we have the money to lend that will make them a reality. OUCU offers great loan rates, flexible terms, and fast responses on your application. Not a member? You can join. Really, stop by a branch or visit OUCU.org. Equal housing opportunity loan subject to credit approval. Federally insured by NCUA. MLS number 433809. When you order your groceries online with ClickList from Kroger, you can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And you'll save time, too. Try ClickList from Kroger with same-day pickup. Check it out at Kroger.com. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. These days, we're all doing a lot more virtually, which is why at Ohio Health, we've expanded our virtual care options and availability to make it even easier to get safe expert care at home. That includes virtual visits with over a thousand trusted providers in every medical specialty. Learn more about our virtual health options at ohiohealth.com slash virtual health. Let's go Cats. Let's go Labatt Blue Light. When you drink a pristine Canadian Pilsner, you're good at beer. Bobcats fans, grab a Labatt Blue Light and be good at beer. Always enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2021 Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All rights reserved. Labatt, registered U.S. trademark of Labatt Brewing Company, LTD. We've all seen the tragedies associated with drug activity and impaired driving in our state. This is Trooper Conkler of the High State Highway Patrol's Athens Post. We need everyone's help to keep drugs out of our communities, keep impaired drivers off our roads, and get people to make good decisions when driving. Traffic and community safety is the responsibility of everyone. You can do your part in calling pound 677 to report drug activity and impaired or reckless drivers to law enforcement. Together we can make Ohio a safer place to live and travel. Let O'Neill Hartman Insurance show you how Grange's strong value and fast claim service delivers league-leading coverage. O'Neill Hartman Insurance will find you a Grange auto policy that balances competitive rates and responsive Grange claim service. O'Neill Hartman Insurance considers Grange their go-to company for their combination of great value and outstanding claim service. Call O'Neill Hartman at 740-797-4685 or visit them online at O'NeillHartman.com. 
You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer, please call us at 800-321-8293. We're here for you. Bobcat fans, the Hugh White Family of Dealerships is your hometown Athens dealer. And to show our commitment to the community, we're offering free car washes for Ohio University students and faculty, as well as college grad discounts with all of our new brands. But that's not all. We provide free concierge service for faculty. We'll pick up your vehicle and drop it back off after service. Take advantage of our leases and under $200 per month. Come visit us on North Columbus Road, less than five minutes from campus or online at visithughwhite.com. And remember, if the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. Whether you're coming to Athens to root on the Bobcats, visiting friends and family, or just in town for business, the Hampton Inn in Athens wants to be your home away from home. With 86 sparkling rooms, complimentary high-speed internet, hot breakfast served each morning, and a spa and business center, you can expect a great night stay with service that will bring you back. Visit us on the web at HamptonInn.com. That's HamptonInn.com. And go Bobcats! If you're traveling to a game, a weekend road trip, or just around town, you need to stop at GoMart. You'll find a GoMart open 24 hours a day right off the interstate or right off Main Street in your local community. You can refuel your ride with quality gasoline and also yourself with popular snacks, drinks, and more. We're making it easy to keep up with your busy schedule by keeping you on the go. GoMart is the proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat football. Go for good times. Jumpstart your day at the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Athens. Enjoy complimentary hot breakfast, then unwind on our beautiful outdoor patio, which includes a gas fire pit and barbecue grill. Conveniently located on East State Street, just a short drive from the Ohio University campus and uptown Athens, the Fairfield Inn and Suites is situated near many shopping and dining venues. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites, you're our number one priority. Call 740-589-5839 to book your next visit to Athens or find us online at fairfieldinn.com. Hi, this is Jared Dean with Dean Heating and Cooling. As your local Tempstar dealer, you can experience superior home comfort with Tempstar game-changing technology. Whether you need a fall tune-up or a midwinter repair call, our expert technicians will make sure your heating system is running at peak performance. Count on Dean Heating and Cooling and Tempstar to keep you cozy all winter long. Find us online at deanheatingandcooling.com and go Cats! Voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, on behalf of David White Services, the largest heating and cooling dealer in Southeast Ohio. They've been the choice of thousands for over 45 years. Offering the most efficient Lennox heat pumps, air conditioners, and furnaces, David White Services can save you money on your heating and cooling bills. Thanks, Russ. I'm David White. And I'm Esther White Thomas, inviting you to call us today to schedule a free estimate for heating and cooling or a new gas fireplace. David White Services is a proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat Athletics. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax-free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are 
one. Learn more at caresource.com. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. In Heiser-Busch, Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Plan your next visit to stand up and cheer for your Ohio Bobcats in Athens County, Ohio. Visit AthensOhio.com, the best resource for where to eat, where to stay, where to shop, and where to play. Athens County is home to countless trails and outdoor activities. Enjoy mountain biking, kayaking, rock climbing, and hiking. Find your own adventure. Cruise the Hawk Hawking Adena Bikeway. Mountain bike the Bailey's Trail System. Hike trails less traveled at Stroud's Run State Park. Or ride nine thrilling motorcycle routes on Ohio's Windy Nine. We can't wait to see you in Athens County, Ohio. The road to a championship is built on years of practice and hard work. That's true in basketball and the construction industry. The apprenticeship and upgrade training programs provided by the Athens Area Union Building Trades produces the workforce with the most modern skills and cutting edge knowledge in the industry. The key to success to the Bobcats on the floor is the same as your choice on the work site. The winning move is working with members of the Athens Area Union Building Trades, proud sponsor of Ohio University Basketball. You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero, when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. At People's Bank, our vision is to be the best community bank in America. We focus on building relationships with our clients and offering cutting-edge financial products. People's Bank is proud to support the local communities in which we work and live. This is Ashley Brown, People's Bank Vice President and Regional Manager, and we would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank, working together, building success. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender.
And we're back at OSF. Tori Walker, she was able to sit up and now is receiving medical attention. Uh, stay tuned for updates on social media. We'll make sure uh, to give you guys the updates, and we really hope that she's okay. Yeah, our thoughts are with her and the rest of her family. We um, do have a softball game here to play, and obviously we, we hope she's all right, but the game is going to restart here. Um, obviously, there was a bit of an extended delay, so we're going to have some uh, some quick warm-ups, nothing too crazy, but uh, we're going to come back here to the bottom of the fifth. It's still a 2 nothing game, and it's the game's still very much in the balance, and it was a pretty wild play there that happened at the end of that inning. So, you know, it kind of bounced, and the, the initial collision where Walker was injured was how it all started because – it was just kind of a blue ball right into the outfield. Uh, Walker collided with, I believe it was um, it was Juhas at, at second base, trying to um, trying to both get that ball, and they collided, and that's where the injury occurred. But then it was just a heads up play over there. But I believe it was Caroline Spacek. Um, and it was she got the ball over there and just fired it all the way across over to third base to get the out. And it was a wild play to end the top of the fifth. And now we're back in the bottom of the fifth. And the game's still very much in the balance. Very much so. Um, this is the second game in a row where the Bobcats have had some sort of delay within the fifth inning. In their last matchup against Ball State, the game was tied 4-4. Four to four, And then a two-hour rain delay happened. Um, and that really presents a lot of challenges for the players, making sure that they're still staying loose yep. and uh, being able to stay within the game. And they ended up falling to Ball State 4-5. to five. So this is another opportunity to be able to deal with the delay in the game and get an opportunity to be able to uh, right that wrong and be mm -hmm. able to get a victory. And luckily, it doesn't look like we're going to have to worry about any rain days delays to today. But um, it was still a delay, and, you know, you got to get your mind back into the game. That's the thing now. You have to, you know, obviously your thoughts are with Tori and, your, you know, your teammate, but you want to make sure that, you know, you focus on getting the win. Um, and, I, again, you know, we want to make sure she's okay, but at the same time you got to focus on getting that win, getting that victory. 100%. And if there's anybody that you want leading off for you when it comes down to really getting everything settled back in, it's Allie England who will be up first for the Bobcats. So the top of the order is going to be back up. The one, two, three hitters for the Bobcats, Allie England, Yasmin Logan, and Megan McMenemy are on deck. So it's going to be an exciting inning, inning number five, bottom of the fifth. Bobcats find themselves up 2-0. Allie England, she scored earlier today on a sacrifice fly for Megan McMinnemy, and then a home run by Sophia Bernard takes us to where we are right now. 2-0 is the lead for the Bobcats, and Grace Leto still pitching in the circle for Central Michigan. That one's outside of the lefty hitter England, 0-1, or 1-0. Yeah, and in that bottom of the fourth, we saw the best inning we've seen from Grace Leto. She turned it up. She didn't have any strikeouts coming out of that inning. She struck out the side in the bottom of the fourth. So the Bobcats will have to respond offensively as there's another strike from Leto. She is starting to find the zone and that is a danger for the Bobcats. Danger indeed. Uh, Mackenzie Cole has been playing very well though um, in her own right and she's shut out Central Michigan up to this point. So it'll take a solid defensive effort for the Bobcats to stave off Central Michigan as there's a swing and a miss, especially now as Grace Leto has really been on her game for these last two innings. Yeah, it's been a great pitcher's battle, this one. Um, you know, Leto has, has made a couple mistakes. Um, the home run ball in the second inning is the most um, noticeable one. But really, since that second inning, she's pitched really well, got a couple hits here and there. But aside from that, really nothing as there's a hit that gets through for England. Yep, a ground ball, which is going to result in a standing single for Allie England, leading it off quite well as she is two for three on the day. Yeah, I mean, on the other side, Mackenzie Cole has just been dominating. Um, she has right now pitching a two-hit shutout through uh, four complete innings. So, uh, or actually five complete innings, my apologies. But, you know, she's been really good. And, you know, so far Central Michigan just has no answers for her offensively. Swing and a miss, and yeah, or England goes for the stealing attempt, and she's able to get to second base. She's able to complete the steal as Maddie Springer tried to get in position for Central Michigan on the plate for the tag out, but she was unable to field the ball, resulting in a steal for the Bobcats. 0-1 is the count as Yasmin Logan is up. She is 0 for 2 on the day, looking for her first hit, and looking to be the seventh hit of the Bobcats on the day.
0-1 pitch. That's going to be blooped up into right field, and the catch is made by McKaylee Valamont. Yeah, and England thought about tagging up, but um, Valamont was ready over there in uh, right field, to, and I think she probably would have thrown England out, so England makes the smart business decision and uh, stays at second. As now McMenemy's up in another big spot. We saw this combination lead to some runs earlier in this game. And in the first inning, uh, Allie England was on third base when McMenemy was up to bat, and McMenemy was able to get a sacrifice fly. This time, England's on second. What can McMenemy do here? And that one is right down Broadway for a strike for Leto. McMenemy on the day so far for today. She has a sacrifice fly resulting in an RBI as well as a single. And then she was able to get to second base uh, before she was stranded. 0-1 pitch. And that's going to be fouled, resulting in the count being 0-2 in favor of Leto. Bobcats find themselves up 2-0 here at OSF, bottom of the fifth inning. Beautiful evening or afternoon turning into evening on the banks of the Hocking. Leto delivers the pitch. There's going to be a blooper out to right field. It bounces for a base hit. And you're going to have runners on the corner as that is a standing single by Megan McMenemy as she is continuing her excellent day, two for two with the sack fly on the day. Yeah, see, if, if there's two outs, uh, it's 3 nothing Bobcats right now. But England, with just that half a second of hesitation off second base, just doesn't know for sure if it's going to get caught. Um, you know, in the end, she does get to third base, so McMenemy is able to get on herself and get the runner. Now, big, big spot here because this game could get away from Central Michigan real quick here um, as the Bobcats have a real opportunity here to get up to the plate and put this game well out of the Chippewas' reach. Yep, Analia Paoli is up, and that ball is right in the zone for a strike from Grace Leto. But Paoli, on the day, she has a single, and then she was hit by pitch, which gave her first base. And she's working with runners in the corner for the Bobcats. 0-1 with one out, bottom of the fifth. Bobcats up 2-0. Yeah, this is not the part of this Bobcat lineup you want to face. Leto delivers one too low, 1-1. One, one. I mean, we, we talked about it earlier. I mean, you've got... England, you've got McMenemy, and you've got Paley, who are all good hitters, and you've got Spacek waiting on deck here. Um, all really, really good hitters for the Bobcats. So, we, you know, this is not, not a good spot here for Grace Leto. She's got to find a way out of this. Breeze picks up, and that one is towards the first base side, fouled as Paoli got some good contact on it. That one almost hit the uh, camera person from WOUB, Brian Kirk. What a guy. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, just a little bit late on the swing there. But, um, yeah, she got the, I think she got the pitch that she wanted there, but now 2-1 count of strikeout here would just be huge. Paoli has other plans, though, from the plate. 1-2 pitch. That one's upstairs. 2-2. Two -two. Good take from Paoli. She's able to, looks like she wanted to swing at that one, was able to check and hold it back. Paoli originally from Point Marion, Pennsylvania, in her sophomore year with the Bobcats. There's the pitch, gets some contact. It's caught by the first baseman, number 12, Shannon Stein, who stepped up to make the catch. That's going to be the second out of the inning. Runners remain on the corner for the Bobcats. At first, it's McMenemy, and at third, it's Allie England. Yeah, big play there. Um, as uh, McMenemy was able to get back, we almost saw it, almost a repeat of that play from earlier in this game. But um, in the end, uh, heads up for McMenemy to be able to get back on the bag. But now she's big out there, was able to keep the run from getting home too. So now you got two outs, a little bit of security. Oh, she got all that one. Yep, and that ball is fouled out towards third base side, Caroline Spacek. She is back up. She is 0 for 2 on the day with a couple of fly outs, looking for her first hit of the day, trying to add to that impressive hit total of seven for the Bobcats. And a base hit would for sure score a runner. Yeah, and Leto kind of will take a, take a breath after that one. That one definitely had her worried for a second. And that one is in the strike zone at the far corner of it, and that's the first strike, or and second strike. One thing, one thing Leto's done really well over these past couple innings is just jumping out ahead of, ahead of hitters, just getting in pitcher-friendly counts, 0-2, 1-2, and just being able to work with that, you know, force hitters to hit off the back foot. That time it's outside, 
One, two is the count. Still a pitcher's count for Leto. It does look like Faith Howe is warming up in the bullpen for the Chippewa, so we'll see if we see her at some point. It is. It's always impressive seeing these pitchers in softball go the whole game, but the pitching depth for Central Michigan is quite impressive as there is some players with some success. As there is the pitch, and that one's going to be fouled out to the back netting. But, yeah, and this um, pitching staff for Central Michigan, you have Caitlin Bean, who's 4-8 and on the year. You got Caitlin Britton, who's 0-0. Zero and zero. Faith Howie, who's 1-1 one and one on the year. Maddie Wallace, who is 2-0 and oh in her freshman campaign, as well as Haley John as well, too, in the back. So they definitely have some good depth there. Yeah, and the Bobcats are really struggling with pitching it depth. Is. As there's the pitch for the hit that's going to be tight. Tight, and it's in time, and the – Central Michigan's able to strand two Bobcats right before they were able to score, so they get out unscathed off of the 6-3 play. Bobcats still in the lead, 2-0 going into the sixth inning. You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Let O'Neill Hartman Insurance show you how Grange's strong value and fast claim service delivers league-leading coverage. O'Neill Hartman Insurance will find you a Grange auto policy that balances competitive rates and responsive Grange claim service. O'Neill Hartman Insurance considers Grange their go-to company for their combination of great value and outstanding claim service. Call O'Neill Hartman at 740-797-4685 or visit them online at O'NeillHartman.com. Welcome back to OSF. The Bobcats find themselves in the lead 2-0 to zero here at home as there's been a little bit of a shuffle in the outfield here as Emily Walker steps into the game at right field in the place of her sister. And Yasmin Logan will be playing left field, it seems like, as Allie England will move to center field. And for you uh, Ohio baseball fans, they were able to get a win on the road in Ypsilanti. Uh, Bobcats bringing home a W, 12-8 over Eastern Michigan. And the softball team trying to replicate that here at OSF. Currently 2-0 against Central Michigan as we head to the top of the sixth. Just two innings left. So far, it's been pretty much spotless for Mackenzie Cole, but still potentially two innings of work. There is some work in the bullpen. It's a little hard to tell from up here who it is. But so far, Cole has been pretty much perfect. She's been absolutely terrific. And that one's going to be a foul out the back. 0-2. And Coach Moore, I know he's going to be pretty happy with his squad for the victory there for OU Baseball. Yeah, they're both, both, um, both teams on the diamond here in Athens are certainly competing this year. You know, last year, the both teams struggled a little bit at times. This year, they've both competed. Um, I really like the fight I see in that baseball team. And there's a strike, and that's going to be strike two. One, two is the count. And as we've, sorry, as we've been talking about all year, this, or all games, sorry, this Ohio Bobcat softball team is also right near the top of the conference. And, you know, this series is so big for positioning up near the top. But certainly the one, two pitch, and that is strike three for Tessa Nuss, who made her first at bat of the game. She's from Lake Orion, Michigan. And she strikes out there on her first attempt. Yeah, just Cole once again, just showing off the command. 
that she has over her pitches. Um, it really is something to behold. And now next up at the plate is Abby Tomey. She's one of the few players to get a hit today. She singled in the first, struck out in the third. And she fouls to start off this at-bat. Abby Tolmy is one of those players that's going to be a, an exciting player in the MAC, as she was second team All MAC last season as just a freshman, having a great campaign now. Wouldn't be surprised if she's first team All MAC this year, and she'll be a problem for every team in the MAC for years to come. Yep. 0 oh, 1 pitch, and a strike. 0 oh, 2 is the count now in she, favor of Mackenzie Cole. She led the team last year in batting average with a .355, which is obviously pretty, pretty freaking good. Um, and then this year she's got a .324 average, so not too far behind that, and almost 30 singles now after today's single. So she is hitting the ball really well. That one's outside for the first ball of the at-bat. 1-2 is the count with one out. Bobcats up 2-0. Thanks to an Alley England run off of a Megan McMinimi sacrifice fly for the RBI, as well as in the second inning, Sophia Bernard hit a home run to center field. And that's how we find ourselves at 2-0. 1-2 pitch. That one's going to be grounded right down the middle, and that's going to be a base hit for Abby Tolmy. She moves her record up to 2-3, two, three, two for 3 on the day with that single. Yeah, Tolmy that. And then with the scenario that with the way this game is played out, that's all, all Central Michigan needs is just to get some runners on base because they've struggled all day to get runners on base. This is, I believe, just their fifth base runner of the day. So, you know, getting somebody on base is huge. And now with one potential swing of Shannon Stein's bat, we could be tied. Mackenzie Cole has other plans for the Bobcats, delivers the pitch, and it is low. 1-0 is the count. We'll also see if Tolmy maybe goes for a steal here. We saw the Bobcats go for a steal twice, and they've been successful both times. We'll see if they try and test Brooke Rice's arm at catcher, see if they can get to second base with only one out. Shannon Stein, she is up right now for Central Michigan. 0 for 2 on the day, fly out and a strikeout were the ways that she was retired. 2-0 is the count. Stein finds herself ahead. Could potentially be the tying run if she's able to get on plate or get on a base. Yeah, and this game would just spring to life all of a sudden. And right now it just feels like Ohio is just controlling it. But, again, as I said, one swing of the bat. That one is low. 3-0 is the count. And we'll see if Stein decides to make a big hit or a big swing here, especially given the count is 3-0. That was close. That one looked real close to being a strike. You know, maybe didn't quite graze the edge of the, of the corner of the zone. But now, big spot here for Mackenzie Cole. She's got to work herself into a little bit of a one-out jam with the 3-0 count here. Cole delivers a pitch, and that one is in the strike zone this time, 3-1. Yeah, that's the way to respond as well. When you when you pitch three balls in a row and make it a 3-0 count, you got to start attacking the hitter, dare them to uh, dare them to hit your hit your pitches right down the middle. And that one was a was a heater, straight down Broadway, as you say. 3-1 count, here's the pitch. Little to the outside, that is going to be a walk. Only the third walk of the day for Mackenzie Cole. And that's gonna put Abby Tolmy on second, and that's gonna put Shannon Stein on first for the Chippewas. And now, Kenzie Roark is gonna go up to the circle and gather her team infield. Just to talk about things, especially now with Central Michigan threatening more than they have done all day yeah, today. Yeah, this is probably, I think this is maybe the first or second time that they've had a base runner uh, in scoring position. So you have to take advantage right now for Central Michigan. This is, you know, they only have three hits on the day. Um, they've only had six base runners with the three walks that um, Cole has issued. And, you know, Cole has had their number all day. But, you know, here's an opportunity that they've been presented. Ohio didn't take advantage of their opportunity in the last inning. Can Central Michigan make the pay right here? We will see. Only time will tell. It'll take a great effort from the Bobcat fielding as well as from the circle from Mackenzie Cole, who's pitched all the innings so far today. 
And she'll look to pick up the second out of the inning and potentially even a double play. Yeah, and the double play is most certainly on. That wasn't really on, or it was on for Central Michigan. But now when you've got runners at first and second, you know, pretty much any base besides home is the old, you know, that's what you say, any base but home. So, you know, there's opportunities for double plays. A ground ball could very easily be turned into two. But then again, a fly ball or anything over the park, and this is a whole new ball game. 0-0 oh, oh, pitch to McKaylee Valamont. And that one's right in the strike zone. Great pitch by Mackenzie Cole. Yeah, oh one. Really good pitch there on the inside. You know when you're when you're facing um, a hitter like that, you gotta you gotta attack on the insides, and that's exactly what Mackenzie Cole does right there. You know, attacking the hitter. Oh one pitch, swing and a miss, and chance almost a steal as Brooke Rice delivers that ball out to Lauren Uas. Runner is safe but 0-2 is the count for well, Central Michigan. If there was any doubt that Brooke Rice could uh, get the ball over there to second, that will immediately dispel it. That was a great throw um, just to keep the runner um, told me on her, on her toes over there. Kenzie Cole delivers the pitch, 0-2. No movement, 1-2. Or it might go down as a foul ball. No, but it will be a ball. 1-2 is the count. One out. Big spot. Um, if they can strike out here, you'll feel a lot better because then, you know, no potential opportunities for, you know, sacrifices or anything like that. But um, we'll see what happens here with, uh, with Coles. Here comes the payoff. There's a sliding attempt. Rice delivered out to Juhas. Runner is still safe. Kelly Valamont stays alive as the sophomore, who has 10 RBIs on the year, stays alive at the plate, looking to try to make something happen as a yeah. base run could potentially make this game a little closer. And Brooke Rice just keeping Tommy honest once again there, don't not letting her lead go too far. And there's the swing, and that's going to be fouled outside towards third base. Yeah, good contact. Just got out a little bit ahead of it again. And um, that'll be a foul ball down the third baseline. But uh, it's a battle. This is a big, you know, big spot in the game. It's a big battle in terms of um, getting, you know, getting what you need to get done here for Mackenzie Cole. She's got to find a way to get this strikeout for the Bobcats. You wouldn't expect anything less from the second place and third place teams right now in the MAC. Two evenly matched teams. Chippewas from Mount Pleasant and the Bobcats from Athens. 1-2 pitch from Mackenzie Cole. And that one's going to be a wild pitch as that's over the head of Brooks Rice. Runners advance. And now Shannon Stein and Abby Tomey are in scoring position. Abby Tomey advances the third. Shannon Stein to second. Well, you can scratch that double play conversation we just had because that's pretty much out the window now with runners on second and third, no force. So now you're really looking for a ground ball here or a potential strikeout. And you know, they'll bring the infield in um, to check the runners and then try and get the out at first. 2-2 two -two pitch. Going to be a blooper. And that's going to go inside and almost a diving catch, but the ball is dropped. And that's going to result in one out as they're able to at least pick off Valamont at second. But it is going to result in a run. And Abby Tomey scores. Yeah, it was a good effort out there from uh, Emily Walker, I believe, who was uh, trying to make the play over in right field. She just juggled it a little bit. It was a great sprawling dive, almost got it, but then, you know, didn't give up on the play, just picked it up, got the ball to second, where Valamont probably tried to bite off a little bit more than she could chew there to get to second, and she was called out. So the Bobcats get the second out, but they give up a run, and this is a ball game. Yes, it is. 2-1 is the score as that ball is fouled back towards us and right over hitting the top of the press box for Skylar Coberly, who is back up today. She grounded out um, at the beginning in the first inning, and in the fourth inning she was a part of the 6-3 double play that happened off the fantastic play of Megan McMenemy. And now this is a big spot as the Bobcats' lead has been cut in half. 2-1 is their lead. Runner threatening on third, and that runner is Shannon Stein. But 0-2. Is the count as Mackenzie Cole finds herself ahead and has a potential shot to strand a runner and keep the Bobcats in the lead. Yeah, uh, any sort of base hit here will uh, will tie this game. So let's see what Cole's got. And that one's outside. 
Coberly decides not to chase after it. One, two. One of those very pivotal moments in the game. It is the sixth inning, and there's been a lot of pitches delivered by McKenzie Cole. Stands strong, delivers a shot in the circle, fouled out towards third base side. Keeping the count 1-2 here at OSF. It's been a beautiful day for softball. 70 degrees, nice light breeze going back and forth. And when I woke up today, Ethan, and saw the sunny weather outside and then took a walk for the first time, I just knew it was a great day for softball. Yeah, you can smell the spring in the air in Athens. The, the cherry blossoms are starting to spring. You're starting to see the flowers, the shrubbery start to grow. As you know, here in Ohio, you know, the winter always just keeps hanging around. And, hey, it's been hanging around for the past couple weeks. You know, there have been some days where it's been 70s and some days where it's been in the 40s. So, you know, it's just that back and forth. But hopefully we're starting to see that, you know, real turn to spring that hits kind of mid-April, which is where we are. Yeah, especially for the players' sake, so they can be able to continue playing all their games, yep. uh, especially for all the fifth-year seniors and seniors on the char depth chart for OU. Uh, you only get a few more games left in your career, so you want to be able to make the most out of it. Absolutely. Here comes Mackenzie Cole, one of those seniors at a modern day high school in California, delivers the pitch. That one's going to be fouled backwards, and Brooke Rice gets underneath it and makes the catch. And that's going to be the end of the inning. The Bobcats allow one, but they still keep their lead. Two to one is the score going into the bottom of the six. You're listening to Ohio Softball on Ohio Bobcat TV. You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero, when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, on behalf of David White Services, the largest heating and cooling dealer in Southeast Ohio. They've been the choice of thousands for over 45 years. Offering the most efficient Lennox heat pumps, air conditioners, and furnaces, David White Services can save you money on your heating and cooling bills. Thanks, Russ. I'm David White. And I'm Esther White Thomas, inviting you to call us today to schedule a free estimate for heating and cooling or a new gas fireplace. David White Services is a proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat Athletics. Welcome back to OSF for the bottom of the sixth inning. The Bobcats find themselves up by just one run. Two to one is the score, and it's been quite competitive thus far. The Bobcats got off to an early lead, 2-0 through two innings, but Central Michigan has hung around and has put up their first run in the top half, and the Bobcats will do what they can to answer as they have Sophia Bernard back up, who hit a home run earlier today as well as hitting a single. So she's had herself a great day, two for two. And also, Brooke Rice will also be up in the inning as well. Yeah, Brooke Rice, one last opportunity to get that birthday hit. But, um, you know, the Bobcats now, that lead was cut in half in that last inning, as you said. And then, you know, you know they're going to have to get through the top of the seventh to close this one out potentially. And uh, it'll probably be cold to finish it out. Um, you know, she's had a sparkling outing. But, you know, also on the other side, um, Leto has really turned it up in the second half of this game. You know, after giving up those two early runs, she has really limited the Bobcats. And last inning, the Bobcats had runners on the corners with just one out. Leto was able to work her way out of the jam and not give up any runs and keep the Chippewas in this one. Have Leto has retired six out of her last eight that she has faced from this Bobcats hitting order, batting order. And the count is 1-1 for Leto going against Sophia Bernard, who's had her number on the day. Yeah, single and a homer for Bernard. That homer currently the difference. That one is fouled backwards. 1-2 is the count. And big spot here for Grace Leto to potentially pick up the first out of the inning, while the Bobcats might have a chance to be able to set the tone for a solid inning. And nothing the Bobcats would like more right now than to get an insurance one or two and just make that top of the seventh a little bit less tense because you know every batter coming up for Central Michigan is going to want it. And Sophia Bernard stays alive as that one is fouled backwards. 
right above us. The one, two. That time it's outside. That evens up the count at two, two. Another, that was close. Another one that maybe right near the edge of the zone. But um, staying alive, staying alive is Sophia Bernard, 2-2 two, two count. And we'll see if she can get on base, work the count a little bit, or get a hit. Leto delivers the pitch. And that one's a swing and a miss as she strikes out Sophia Bernard swinging first out of the inning. Caitlin Fogue will be batting next. This is her first at bat of the day. Her average is 2 3 3, 13 RBIs on the season, as well as three home runs. And she is a senior from Hickman, or from Columbia, Missouri, Hickman High School. And the first pitch is a little bit outside. 1 0 is the count. One out in the inning. Bobcats up 2 1. And another strike there, first strike of this at bat, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, the Bobcat offense has cooled down considerably since, you know, that flurry. They had a little bit of an a, a rally going in that last inning but couldn't end up getting anything out of it. Um, we'll see if the Bobcats can get anyone on base here with one out. And another strike, 1-2. One, yeah, Fogue has had some big, big hits and big moments over the past few seasons. Uh, we'll see here as she, you know, subs into this game if she's able to, you know, make the same sort of thing happen right here in this spot. A one-two pitch. And there's a swing, and that ball is going to go out of bounds into foul territory towards the Central Michigan broadcast crew. Bobcats and Central Michigan Chippewas, a lot on the line, second place in the MAC, as well as being able to stay ahead of a couple of teams that are right there behind them, including Bowling Green, who's 8-5 and five in conference, Buffalo, who's 6-4, and four, and Ball State, who's 6-5. I also can't count out Akron, who's at 7-6, and six, all teams with positive records and can be tough outs for people in the MAC. There's the pitch upstairs, 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, Akron certainly turned it around. Last year was a really rough year, you know, 25-plus losses for that Zips group. And this year they really put together a much more consistent and better season. They're not rolling over for anybody. You know, we saw it when they came to Athens a week or so ago. It was a tough game. And there's a swing and a miss, and that'll be out for Caitlin Fogue. And that is the second strikeout picked up by Grace Leto. Brooke Rice finds herself back up on her birthday once again. Earlier today, she had a ground out and a strikeout looking for that hit on her birthday. And she swings in, gets a hit out to right field on a line drive, and she's going towards second base, and she stand, gets a nice standing double as Brooke Rice on her birthday gets herself a double. Yeah, now when we talk about insurance runs, that's how you start it off. You get a runner in scoring position now as, as Juhas is up to the plate to potentially get something as uh, looks like um, the coach is over, Ro Roark is over to uh, make the umpire to make some sort of a switch. Potentially um, pinch running, I think it looks like. Yeah, Tori O'Brien's going to come in and uh, pinch run. Um, for Rice, great hit by Rice over into right field. Just got past the uh, outstretched glove of um, Valamont over there in right field. But now a big spot here for Juhas to um, potentially grab her fourth RBI of the year, potentially, if she can find a base hit. Yep, it would be a huge one as Tori oh, yeah. O'Brien as a pinch runner from Mason High School, sophomore. I really like that they give a lot of these younger players an opportunity to be able to get out there, run the bases a little bit, potentially steal some bases too while you're out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tori O'Brien has 10 runs on the year. Now Leto delivering the pitch to Juhas. She does not make a swing on that. 
and it is out of the strike zone, 1-0. Lauren Juhas on the day had a fly out to left field and a fly out to center field. 0 for 2, but looking for a first hit of the day. And she gets a swing, and that one's going out to right field. And it's just in fair territory, and that's going to be a scoring run. And Juhas keeps going, keeps going all the way to third base on a sliding triple. And that's going to score Tori O'Brien. Bobcats extend their lead 3-1. to one. Yeah, and we talk about a little two-out rally, a little spurt of offense, and the Bobcats manufacture a little bit of breathing room. Two big hits back-to-back brings home the run. It's all started with the, the two out hit by Brooke Rice into right field and they attacked right field again um, with Juhas with a hit. It looked like it might have gone out of the park for a second, uh, but it just it pretty much hit right in the corner, right near the 200 sign where that Mac logo is over in that corner. Um, pretty much right in the dirt over there and it was a good fielding from Valamont to be able to get it in, but it's still a triple and potential for more opportunity here. And now Allie England is up as the Bobcats have been doing a great job of working with the two outs in the inning, continue staying alive, and they've been able to put up an extra run with now Juhas in scoring position. And I'll tell you, even Lauren Juhas, she got the third base in a blink of an eye. Yeah, she showed she some great speed. speeding around those bases, let me tell you. And there's a swing. That's going to go up to center field and over. And that's going to be a home run as it looked like it bounced against the wall. And that will go down as a home run as Allie England delivers in a huge sixth inning for the Bobcats. And that's going to score two, five to one. Bobcat lead. Two out rally. Look at that. And the brick is out for Allie England as the Bobcats hit their second homer of the day, and the two out rally is pretty much complete. Now that one was another flare, almost to the same exact spot where that home run earlier was, but just an absolute laser off of the bat from Allie England, and now the Bobcats have more than just breathing room. They have plenty of room now to exhale. It's a four run lead that the Bobcats have earned in this inning. Yeah, has been Logan back up as Grace Leto delivers that one to the outside. Yeah, on that home run, it bounced off of the wall right in front of the scoreboard. So for a second, I thought it was like, oh, it, did it come down right before the wall? Was the catch made? But it ended up being yeah. a home run uh, bouncing off of the cage in front of the scoreboard. It may have indeed bounced off of the scoreboard, but definitely an opportune time for a run to happen. And the Bobcats find themselves up now by four as they've been able to pad the lead a little bit. And just talk about a great answer by the Bobcats to Central yeah. Michigan. They scored a run. They threatened a little bit. And now the Bobcats find themselves in a situation where they're up 5-1. to 0-1 oh, one pitch. Yeah, and Leto ha had been dominating, really. Ever since that those first couple innings, she had started to just take control of this Bobcat lineup. Um, and in the first two outs of this inning, she had taken control. She struck out Caitlin Fogue. She was able to get... Um, another, she was able to strike out both of the first two batters in the inning. And then, you know, it all starts. The rally starts, a double, a triple, and then a home run. It was like one, two, three. Or two, three, four, I guess you could say, when it comes to bases. That's right. And now 0-2 is the count as Grace Leto is going to try to close the inning with a third strikeout, an inning that started off very well for her has slowly become a nightmare to the Bobcats' advantage. Leto delivers a pitch outside. 1-2 is the count. Yasmin Logan does a great job of not chasing after that one. Showing good eyes. Leto in the circle. Delivers the pitch. And there's going to be a swing. And there's a good bit of it in the passage. Or the uh, hit is dropped on the outside by the left fielder. Yasmin Logan keeps going. Going to third base. Slides into the plate. It is safe. Another triple for the Bobcats. This time on a drive to left field by Yasmin Logan. And she gets her first base hit of the day. That puts the Bobcat totals on hits up to 11. Wow, yeah. Talk about the speed again. We've seen some absolute blazes around the base paths right here and that was another flare out to left center and then you know as Logan's coming around it, you're, you're thinking you know it was real close there to play on third um, but in the end Logan's just by about a hair able to beat out the throw 
And now potential for even more runs to come in, and the Bobcats to pad that lead even farther as Megan McMenemy now up to bait, and she's had a really good day at the plate. Yeah, and we talked about before the game how Central Michigan's one of those teams that does not make a lot of mistakes in the outfield and in fielding, and that was one of those rare cases where they did make a mistake as there was a drop on the outside. It was a tough catch attempt uh, for tough. Kelsey Alexander to go across from her left field position, kind of more into the center field to try to make that catch. Uh, but the Bobcats were able to take advantage, and now they have another runner in scoring position. And Megan McMinnemy, the shortstop who's had herself a great day, looking to be able to send Yasmin Logan home and increase the Bobcat lead to 6-1. to one. And it looks like we will see a pitching change as Grace Leto's day is done. Rough start, rough ending, but the middle was pretty strong for Grace Leto. And now Caitlin Bean, the redshirt junior out of Oxford, Michigan, will come into the game. She is 4-8 and eight on the year. 4-2-4 ERA, 59 strikeouts and 72 innings pitched, and has walked 32. And in their last game against Michigan, she went 3.33 innings, walked four, struck out two, and then allowed four runs in that game against number 24 Michigan, which was very difficult. But when we come back to Ohio Bobcats softball, we will see a new pitcher in the circle for Central Michigan. You're listening to Ohio Bobcat TV. Voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, on behalf of David White Services, the largest heating and cooling dealer in Southeast Ohio. They've been the choice of thousands for over 45 years. Offering the most efficient Lennox heat pumps, air conditioners, and furnaces, David White Services can save you money on your heating and cooling bills. Thanks, Russ. I'm David White. And I'm Esther White Thomas, inviting you to call us today to schedule a free estimate for heating and cooling or a new gas fireplace. David White Services is a proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat Athletics. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. And we're back at OSF in an emphatic sixth inning for the Bobcats. If they've been able to put up three runs, it was a 2-1 game going into the bottom of the six, but the Bobcats have struck gold on their hitting, and they find themselves up 5-1 as there's a new pitcher in the game who pitches to the outside, and that is Caitlin Bean, redshirt junior out of Oxford, Michigan, getting her first action in this game here in Athens, the first of a three-game series. They'll have a doubleheader tomorrow. And you'll hear uh, my colleague Ethan Sargent as well as Carl Blaylock on the call for that one, for both games, actually. Yeah, it should be fun. You know, if, if this game is any, uh, any indicator, it'll be another fun day of softball um, here at OSF. Hopefully the weather holds up. Um, and, yeah, Carl, I know Carl is a, a big softball fan, big baseball fan. I know he enjoys these, so it'll be fun. It is, and there is a hit. It's going. It's a drive to left and out of there. Hasta la vista. And for the Bobcats, wearing their all-white jerseys, they are letting this game snowball as it started off with just a double by Brooke Rice. And then since then, it's led to multiple runs for the Bobcats as they are up 7-1, to one, just yeah. like that. 5-1, to one, or five runs in this inning, and all of them with two outs. It, it, it just kind of came out of nowhere. It looked like it was going to be a routine inning, and it might be a little bit of a nervy top of the seventh. All nerves have been dispelled now as the outcome is almost certain now as the Bobcats have just extended this to a game as now yep. finally for Central Michigan the inning is over. Yep, Paoli grounds that one out and that's going to be the end of an inning. What a great inning by the Bobcats. They score five as the Bob Bobcats increase their lead 7-1 to one going into the seventh inning. You're listening to Ohio Bobcats softball on Ohio Bobcat TV.
You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero, when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. When you order your groceries online with ClickList from Kroger, you can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And you'll save time, too. Try ClickList from Kroger with same-day pickup. Check it out at Kroger.com. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. Back at OSF, the Chippewas find themselves on their last leg. They are down by six and in a really tough spot. I can't help but mention, though, last time they were down six to one to the Bobcats, and they were able to come back, but that took them a couple innings. This time, the Bobcats have just to defend one more inning, and it'll be Mackenzie Cole at the circle for her seventh inning of the day, looking to be able to close this game off. Yeah, and so far, I mean, aside from the one blemish on the scoreboard, she's been really good. Four hits, just three walks, only seven base runners allowed. One run is what really stands out to you. She's been really, really good today. And against a lineup with this much power and this much hitting ability in Central Michigan, it's an impressive performance for Mackenzie Cole. Most certainly. And I know Mackenzie Cole's got to be pleased with the hitting of her team as well and seeing um, the lead that they were able to build up from her. I mean, you almost start sweating when it's a 2-1 yeah. game. The team is right there, and you have to close them out. But now you have a little bit of breathing room here yeah. because Ohio had such an emphatic inning in terms of hitting. And Mackenzie Cole with the 1-1 pitch. Delivers. Strike. Yeah, it's, One, your, two. it's your favorite feeling as a pitcher when you go out there and you see your offense work because it takes all that weight off of your shoulders. You know, the pressure is just so much less on you because it's got to be feeling like that for Cole right now. She knows she can make a mistake or two, and it's not going to cost her team the game because, because of what her offense just did in that last inning. That one is outside. 2-2 two, two is the count for Central Michigan. And right now they have Caitlin Britton, who is in right now. She struck out looking in the second inning and was a part of the 6-3 double play combination that McMenemy performed on Central Michigan. And there's going to be a hit that's going to be swung out to right field and gone for Central Michigan. Lead off home run. And that's exactly to the point that I just said, is that you can afford to make that sort of mistake because of what your offense did. That, that, that two-out rally doesn't happen. We have a tie game right now. So, you know, if you're Mackenzie Cole, you're like, you know what, that's okay. I made a mistake. But at the same time, I could just relax, take a breath. No, I've still got a cushion. But just be smart and just ease your way through the next, you know, couple of pitches. Yeah, it's definitely think. nice having a safety net as Central Michigan, you can still tell they got a lot of team energy as the whole Absolutely. team exited the dugout to congratulate Caitlin Britton on that home run. <laughs> Caitlin Britton, that was her eighth home run of the season. Yeah, I think that's probably why um, head coach uh, Kenzie Roark just kind of came out and, um, you know, gathered the infield and just be like, you know what, heads up, you know, be smart. You know, this game is there to be won. We just need to play smart, play our game and we'll be able to take care of business. But game is not over. There's still three outs left to get for the Bobcats. And here's a reset. 7-2 is the score now. That one is inside for Kelsey Alexander. And Kelsey Alexander, she walked on her first at bat and then had a fly out to right field on a play that was pretty close to being a home run, but it was able to be caught. And she'll have another chance to be able to try to get on the board with a hit. And there's a strike. Mackenzie Cole delivers a great pitch. And this pitching staff for the Ohio Bobcats, they have not used too many pitchers. It's Mackenzie Cole and Kylie Kofelt. Mackenzie Cole, 10 and 10 on the year. Kylie Kofelt, 5 and 8 on the season. And those two have been able to uh, carry the burden right now for the Bobcats in this season. And they've done a great job of it as they find themselves at 9 and 5, looking for win number 10 in conference. Central Michigan looking for win number 8. 
Yeah, and it just speaks to how good both Kafelt and Cole are is that they're able to work, you know, with just the two pitchers. Um, you know, you often do see a lot of these softball pitchers pitch the full game as that was almost strike three just off the inside corner. But you see that, you know, with both of these pitchers, you know, especially Cole today, you've seen the talent. You know, she's been really, really good. And, um, you know, just having that ability to trust both of those pitchers is just so big for your softball team. Certainly is. Both of them are seniors and have been around the program for a while. There's a ground ball going to McMinimi. McMinimi fires that ball to sp and safe. Spot check was able to catch it, but not in time as Kelsey Alexander gets a single. That's a home run and then a single for Central Michigan. No outs, but a double play possibility is still there for the Bobcats. Yeah, it's a tough play for McMenemy. It took a tough bounce right as she's trying to field it, and it just kind of came up above her glove. And I think that might be the reason why the throw was maybe just half a millisecond late. And, you know, still a ways to go for Central Michigan, but if, you know, you wanted that desperation comeback, this is how you probably would have wanted that inning to start. Kenzie Cole a little bit outside to Emily Bracamonte. And she has two fly out, so 0 for 2 on the day. And Central Michigan find themselves down 7 to 2, looking to try to make a comeback. There's a strike, 1 1. Yeah, again, uh, Mackenzie Cole's just got to, you know, find the strike zone, find the, uh, find the moment here. You know, with no outs, getting that first out will help her so much. Well, certainly do. Swing and a miss there. One, two is the count. That'll help a little bit with the pressure. Absolutely. Get yourself into a pitcher's count. Make the hitter, you know, have to beat you, so to speak, instead of beating yourself by putting yourself in a, you know, a hitter-friendly 3-0, 3-1 count. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be fair, or nope, they're going to call it foul as Paoli did slide to try to make a play while fielding, but it is called foul by the umpire. That was very close. Um, it would have been very tight at first. The runner probably gets there to second, but the, the throw to first from Paoli would have been, would have needed to be absolutely perfect. So, Definitely a good break. Yeah. <laughs> for the Bobcats, trying to keep this lead. Now one's going to be blooped out to right field. And there's the catch made by Emily Walker. Runner gets back to first and is safe. But that is the first out of the inning. Two more outs. I think, I think it might be Fogue out there, not Walker, because Walker's got the purple hair. That's how I know that it's not Walker out there. I got gotcha. you. I thought it was her so, sister that was replacing yeah. her. I, no, I think probably it was because they did the switch during the, the hitting, because Fogue came in to hit in the last inning. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, Fogue out there, still a good play regardless. But now you got one out, and uh, that'll help settle it a little bit. You know, all right, two outs to go. You just think, you know, you keep, you know, progressing yourself through it. And I think that might be why Rice is coming to have a chat here with Mackenzie Cole. Just be like, you know what? Hey, you got two outs left until you've got another complete game. You've got a six-hit, two-run gem. Just, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing, and you'll get it done. Exactly. Thanks for having my back right there, Ethan. I really appreciate having you in my dugout. And right now, got a runner on first. That's Kelsey Alexander. And you have Faith Callahan hitting for the first time today, looking for her first hit of the year. She is a sophomore, one of the younger players from New Boston, Michigan, here on high school. And that was another pitch that looked very close. You can hear the, the uh, reactions from uh, our left side. Some of the parents didn't like that no strike call. Look very close. That one is low. 2 -oh. another, another one that was very close. Another one the parents didn't like. But, um, you know, super, super tight. Um, looked like a, that one looked a little bit more like a ball than the first one. Callahan sets up with a blue bat in her hand. Mackenzie Cole delivers the pitch. And in the strike zone, strike one. No doubt about that one. That one was right down Main Street. But, um, yeah, now, you know, if you, you could potentially end the game right here with a double play or, you know, just getting to two outs will just definitely settle the nerves for sure. You know, just seeing yourself give up that home run, you just have to be smart. This time that one is low, 3-1, hitters count. We'll see if Faith Callahan tries to take advantage of the situation.
Had a couple of plate appearances on the year. He's been struck out once, walked once. And swing and misses there. 3-2, full count, one out in the seventh inning. Bobcats lead 7-2. Great pitch there at 3-1. You know, just being able to attack the hitter there in a hitter-friendly count, you know, kind of almost daring the hitter to beat you. I've said it a couple times that you, that's what you have to do when you're behind in the count. And strike three as McKenzie Cole delivers a fantastic pitch. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. One more out. And yeah, talk about stealing yourself. You know, the confidence is clear in Kenzie McCol in, in McKenzie Cole's game. Um, you know, just being able to, you know, go down in the count and then deliver two back-to-back -back pitches like that is really something. Um, you know, the first one with a swing and miss and then just got it right down the middle and gets the backwards K punch out. Samantha Mills is up next here for the Central Michigan Chippewas. She's at the end of their lineup, batting ninth. And we went back to what Coach Salmon said. She wanted some more efficiency out of the 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth hitters in the order. And in order for them to get back to the top, they're going to need Samantha Mills to come through. Here's the pitch. And in the strike zone again, 0-2 is the count. And McKenzie Cole has Central Michigan on the ropes. Yeah, down to their final out, down to their final strike. Can Cole close out what's been a really, really good game from her? with another strikeout. Mackenzie Cole delivers the pitch, and that one is swung, staying alive is Samantha Mills. Mackenzie Cole has had a great day so far with a couple of strikeouts, one, two, three, four that I've counted. Also only two runs allowed, six hits. And a chance to end the game right here at the circle. Mackenzie Cole looks to her coach. And the number 30 jersey delivers the serves hit and swing and miss. And that is the end of the game as the Ohio Bobcats are victorious in game one against Central Michigan, 7-2, to two, as the Bobcats lift their total in the MAC to 10-5 and five, as they now are just a few games back of Miami. Central Michigan falls to 8-4 and four in conference, but they'll have another chance at trying to defeat the Bobcats tomorrow. Yeah, what a great game from both teams. And, you know, the difference ended up being that five-run sixth inning from the Bobcats to just put the game well out of reach for the Chippewas. It was a great game back and forth from both teams. And I'm excited to see where the series goes to tomorrow's doubleheader. You'll catch me and uh, Carl Blaylock on that call tomorrow. But uh, until then, it's been a fantastic day for softball. It's been a great game. 7-2 Bobcats. Thanks for listening along. Yep, and here's a recap of the game of all the scores. In the first inning, McMinnemy scored on a sacrifice fly, and that led to England scoring off of that. Uh, Bernard homer to center field for the Bobcats as well in the second inning. Then in the sixth inning, Tomey scored on a Valamont single to put Central Michigan within one. And then the crazy bottom of the sixth inning happened where Juhas triple to the right, leading to Rice scoring. England homers to center, leading to Juhas scoring. McMinnemy homers to left center, which ended up scoring Logan. And that put the Bobcats up 7-1. And then Britton closed it out with a home run, solo home run for Central Michigan to put the final score at 7-2. Thank you once again for listening to Ohio Bobcat TV. My name is Cedric Granger, and I was joined by Ethan Sargent, and you just listened to an Ohio Bobcat victory.